Chapter 81. Zan Ku enters the world. Outside the Bodhi court. Su Qin was in deep thought. Forget it. The glazed golden core is the most suitable for me right now. If I take the nine revolutions whirling pill rashly, I would be barely able to absorb it, and it will definitely waste a lot of its efficacy. It is not worth it. In the end, Su Qin shook his head. The amount of nine revolutions whirling pill he has right now, is less than the glazed golden core, with a total number less than 500. He needs to save them for when he can fully use the pill. According to the Shaolin Temple's records, compared with the first and third heavenly layer, the fourth heavenly layer will undergo a big qualitative change. So I'll just wait until then. It's not too late to take the nine revolutions whirling pill by that time. Su Qin was now in a good mood after he sorted things out and after the breakthrough, he turned around, returning to the back mountain. Time passed. One month later, Zan Ku came to the back mountain to bid farewell to Su Qin, before going down the mountain. Venerable. I am leaving today. Zan Ku looked a bit lost. Although he was already prepared, now that he was finally leaving, he was really reluctant. However, Zan Ku must do this. Maybe other disciples cannot do this, but Zan Ku has to, he is the holy son after all. I've taught you for so many years. Now that we are parting, here's a bauble as a gift. Su Qin, who was sitting cross-legged, raised his right hand and took out an exquisite palm-sized wooden sword. This wooden sword looked very common and it seemed to have been carved out from the most common wood found in the Shaolin Temple. Thank you, Venerable. However despite its commonness, Zan Ku loved the wooden sword. He immediately wore it around his neck and the sword hung down on his chest. All right, go. Su Qin waved his hand. Yes. Zan Ku respectfully exited the back mountain. It has been so many years, Su Qin was slightly emotional. The little novice monk who was just a little more than 10 years old back then, was already ready to go down the mountain and enter the world. With that wooden sword, he shouldn't be in any danger, Su Qin thought. The palm-sized wooden sword that Su Qin gave to Zan Ku, was naturally carved by him and inside was a sword intent. The sword intent is based on the Dharma sword art. Once Zan Ku was in life-threatening danger, it would trigger this sword intent. With Su Qin's current strength, once the sword intent is triggered, even if it can't kill a legend, at least a grade 1 great grandmaster will die. After all, Zan Ku's venture into the outside world is not some walk in the park, it is full of death and danger. However, Su Qin doesn't think that Zan Ku will suffer any mortal danger. The Shaolin Temple is a great sect and Zan Ku is the Holy Sun. Various sects and many forces will be more or less neutral and won't do anything major. Because even if they don't have a good impression nor like the Shaolin Temple, they can't kill Zan Ku. After all, what does killing Zan Ku mean? It means completely offending a great sect like the Shaolin Temple. When Zan Ku left the back mountain, he walked straight out of the Shaolin Temple. Outside the Shaolin Temple, the sky is high and the earth is wide. As Zan Ku explored the world, he encountered injustice, rescued people, and even met a person who died in vain. After a period of time passed, Zan Ku also got acquainted with disciples of other sects. These disciples were similar to Zan Ku. They were tempering themselves by entering the outside world and proving themselves worthy. Among them is Wudang Mountain True Martial Lineage Taoist Zhang's direct disciple, Zhang Shao. It is said that when Zhang Shao was less than 10 years old, he finished the Tai Chi journey on Wudang Mountain and shocked Taoist Zhang, who had been in retreat for many years. Zhang Shao had now entered the society for a few years longer than Zan Ku. He had also been given the title of, Little Taoist. In addition to Zhang Shao, there were other disciples from various great sects. Little monk, I heard that an arhat was born in your Shaolin temple, is this true? Zhang Shao wore a Taoist robe and asked boredly. He has a free and unconstrained personality, he was not afraid of anyone except Taoist Zhang. Namo Amitabha, Zan Ku put his hands together and did not answer. Before leaving, Abbot Wei Wen reminded Zan Ku to not disclose any information about Su Qin. Zhang Shao, don't tease little Zan Ku like that. A girl next to Zhang Shao glared at Zhang Shao and said dissatisfied. Hey. Lu Rume, you're speaking for this little monk because you like him don't you? Zhang Shao jokingly said. You? 
The girl named Lu Rume pulled out a long sword and cut down towards Zhang Xiao. Sword energy was then sent out. Zhang Xiao's body suddenly flashed and he took a few steps back. You crazy woman, you really did that? When the other people saw this scene, not only did they not come forward to persuade them to stop, but instead they were watching eagerly as if it were a show. They were both from righteous path sects, they naturally will not intentionally hurt anyone. Whether it is Zhang Xiao or Lu Rume, they would stop fighting after some banter and a little bit of exchange, they won't really fight for real. At the same time, in a villa, several figures were standing quietly. Judging from their auras, they were obviously powerful martial artists, especially a man with an aquiline nose. His aura was surging, covering all quarters. He was a grade one great grandmaster. Master, I have checked, and Wudang Mountain Daoist Zhang's direct disciple, Zhang Xiao, will pass by here tomorrow. At this time, a black clothed man entered and knelt towards the aquiline nose man. Are you sure? The aquiline nose man's eyes shined, and asked immediately. According to their route, unless they turn back, they will inevitably pass through here, confirmed the black clothed man. Good, this is good. The aquiline nose man laughed wildly, and his expression grew colder. Taoist Zhang, thirty years ago, you killed my parents and children, making me lose my lineage. Now I will kill your youngest disciple and use him as a sacrifice. The aquiline nose man said every word with deep hatred and anger. The others in the room immediately lowered their heads, not daring to look directly at the aquiline nose man. Master. What if killing Zhang Xiao provokes Taoist Zhang, and he will come to avenge him? A figure standing next to the aquiline nose man asked. He he. The aquiline nose man shook his head. Don't worry, I would not dare to kill him with people around. But here, when the aquiline nose man said this, a smile appeared on his face. Who would know if he's killed here? The aquiline nose man wore a victorious expression. With his grade one great grandmaster strength, if he wanted to kill Zhang Xiao so desperately, he could have killed him long ago. The reason why he has waited until now, is that he is waiting for a foolproof opportunity with no witnesses. And now, that opportunity had finally presented itself. Chapter 82. Wooden Sword. The next day, Zan Ku walked through the forest together with the disciples from other sects and stopped outside a mountain villa. Let's go in and take a break, someone suggested. Most of them were martial artists in the middle realm. Although they have internal strength to aid them, they still need to rest. All right. Zhang Xiao glanced at the villa. After he confirmed that there was nothing wrong with it, he nodded and agreed. Wait a minute. At this moment, Zan Ku suddenly spoke. We shouldn't rest here. Zan Ku continued after some pause. Zan Ku felt something ominous about the villa. Although Zan Ku didn't know what exactly it was, he knew that this was his Buddha's heart warning him. Not resting here. Zhang Xiao was taken aback. He frowned as he looked towards Zan Ku. What do you mean? I just think that this villa is very dangerous. Zan Ku shook his head and explained. The Buddha's heart warning was extremely mysterious and abstruse, he didn't know how to put it into words, but he can certainly feel it. Dangerous? Zhang Xiao looked at the villa again. In that case, let's not stop, let's just leave. Zhang Xiao thought for a while and then said, when the others heard this, although they were a little dissatisfied, they didn't say anything. They may be a bit tired, but as martial artists, they can't support themselves. However, just when Zan Ku and the others were about to leave, a gloomy voice suddenly sounded. Hey, since you're already here, how about staying for a chat? The group then saw a man with an aquiline nose walking slowly towards them. The same moment the aquiline nosed man appeared, a group of black clothed people quietly surrounded Zan Ku's entire group. Troublesome. Zhang Xiao's expression was grave. Since it already came to this point, how can he still not realize that they had fallen into a trap? Dare I ask who you are? My master is Taoist Zhang. Zhang Xiao mentioned his master without the slightest hesitation. The aquiline nosed man gave Zhang Xiao a feeling of extreme danger. Although Zhang Xiao didn't know the exact strength of the aquiline nosed man, it was obvious that the opponent was far stronger than him. In this case, Zhang Xiao naturally wouldn't think about challenging him. Hence, he directly made his background known. When the others heard this, they also slightly relaxed. In their view, Wudang Mountain Taoist Zhang overaws the world, 
Once the other party knows that their entire group is related to Taoist Zhang, they will definitely let them go. However, reality is often disappointing. When the aquiline nosed man heard the words Taoist Zhang, not only did he not show any fear, but he laughed happily. Taoist Zhang? I know, and my target is killing you all. The aquiline nosed man laughed wildly Go, rip them to shreds. The black clothed people immediately pounced onto their group. Suddenly, an old Taoist priest appeared and grabbed Zhang Xiao's shoulder, trying to escape from the place. Martial uncle. Why are you here? When Zhang Xiao saw the old Taoist priest, he was slightly taken aback but it soon turned to joy. Zhang Xiao didn't expect to see his martial uncle here. Ha 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 ha. I found you a long time ago. The aquiline nosed man raised his right hand and gestured towards the old Taoist priest. Wang. A burst of strength coursed through the air and hit the old Taoist priest. Pu Kai. The old Taoist priest became flushed and he vomited a mouthful of blood. He was forced to step back and he almost sat on the ground. You should be Zhang Xiao's protector, right? The aquiline nosed man looked at the old Taoist priest and slowly said. Zhang Xiao has a high status in the sect, so how can there be no one to protect him in his journey? The reason why the aquiline nosed man didn't take action immediately was because he was waiting for such people to come out. And all the others, you all come out. The aquiline nosed man turned his eyes and then looked at specific places. Hey. Who you are? If I remember correctly, we don't know you. Then several figures came out from the dark, one after another. They all looked at the aquiline nosed man and solemnly asked. You don't need to know. There was a hint of coldness on the aquiline nosed man's face, but since you are already here, you can die. Then the aura of a grade 1 great grandmaster exploded. The expressions on the protectors of the disciples' faces changed drastically. They were then sent flying, before hitting the ground hard. Tisk. Unable to withstand a single blow, the aquiline nosed man smiled contemptuously. With his grade 1 great grandmaster strength, Suppressing these protectors was as simple as drinking water and eating. When the disciples saw this scene, they turned cold. They didn't expect even in their wildest dreams, that their elders could not even survive a single move. You guys go quickly. Run as far as you can. At this moment, the old Taoist priest shouted. With this, the disciples woke up from their stupor. Yes. The most important thing now was not to just stand still, waiting for death, they should hurry and escape to save their lives. Run? A trace of sarcasm appeared on the aquiline nosed man's face. These disciples were not even in the upper realm, how can they escape from a grade 1 great grandmaster like him? Let's go. Zhang Xiao silently retreated to Zan Ku's side and quickly said, Martial uncle just told me that he will use a secret technique and bind that person for a few moments. In that time, we should take the opportunity to escape. We should run. Lu Rume trembled. She is of a noble background. Her childhood was smooth sailing and she had never encountered such a situation. It's actually pretty good that she's still able to stand right now. N. Zan Ku nodded, his tone solemn. Just as Zan Ku's voice sounded. The old Taoist priest suddenly took a deep breath and rushed towards the aquiline nosed man. A secret technique. The aquiline nosed man shook his head. He took a step forward and suddenly appeared beside the old Taoist priest. He then slapped him. Bang. The old Taoist priest's expression turned as white as paper, he fell to the ground and fainted. This, Zhang Xiao's face was extremely ugly, while Lu Rume, who was next to him, was trembling with fright. They didn't expect that despite the old Taoist priest using a secret technique, he still couldn't withstand a single blow. I'm tired of playing. The aquiline nosed man looked impatient. He stretched out his right hand and grabbed Zhang Xiao. Don't worry. I won't let you die so easily. I will first let you taste the ultimate torture in the world before I will send you on your way. The aquiline nosed man looked at Zhang Xiao with cruelty. It's over. Zhang Xiao's face was gray. At this moment, his internal strength was sealed by the aquiline nosed man, so he can't even commit Su. Sighed. As for you, I have no grudges with you, however you have seen things that you shouldn't have. The aquiline nosed man turned his gaze towards Zan Ku and the others. He raised his left hand, and his powerful internal strength shot towards them. He wanted Zan Ku and the others to turn into piles of mushed meat. What should I do? The disciples have long lost their souls. 
At this moment, they just subconsciously tried to escape. If even their seniors in the upper realm were defeated, then what could they, as juniors, do? Lu Rume was pale and hid behind Zan Ku. She was in shock and motionless. She just closed her eyes and was waiting for death. Little monk, I didn't expect that I would die with you. Lu Rume muttered to herself. Strangely enough, Lu Rume suddenly felt relaxed even though she knew that death was approaching. Namo Amitabha. If I don't go to hell, then who will? Zan Ku stepped forward and moved towards the aquiline nosed man. Although Zan Ku knew that he was going to die, he did not kneel. Instead, he chose to die with integrity. Little monk, you have courage. The aquiline nosed man shook his head slightly and said, But it's a pity that in front of me, no matter how much courage you have, it wouldn't bring any help. The aquiline nosed man's expression was cold. Bang. Zan Ku felt like he was struck by lightning, his consciousness began to blur. Am I going to die? Zan Ku thought back of the past. He then came to the scene of Su Qin sitting cross legged on the back mountain. At least, I saw the Venerable One last time, just when Zan Ku welcomed death, the palm sized ordinary wooden sword that he had been wearing around his neck began to vibrate. Crack. The wooden sword floated and then slowly swung towards the aquiline nosed man. What is that? The aquiline nosed man immediately noticed the palm sized wooden sword. Not good. The aquiline nosed man suddenly felt extreme danger and was about to retreat. However, the wooden sword suddenly broke and an illusory sword intent condensed. It then slashed down towards the aquiline nosed man. No one can describe the sharpness of this sword intent. When this sword intent revealed itself, it seemed to have cut the void into two pieces. The sword intent then easily cut through the aquiline nosed man's defenses, having him. The remaining sword intent continued and penetrated the villa behind the aquiline nosed man. Hong Long Long, the villa did not break despite being hit. However, moments later, it was divided into two. This is. Everyone's mind blanked. Chapter 83, Shock. This, this, the fleeing disciples saw this scene and were stupefied. The aquiline nosed man who easily suppressed their elders, was cut in half just like that. Just now, that sword light, the old Taoist priest just woke up and also saw the sword light. Even if senior brother, himself, strikes, it is impossible to match the sword light just now. The old Taoist priest muttered to himself. His face was blank, he was still immersed in what just happened. I, am I alive? Although Zhang Xiao fell to the ground, he didn't feel any pain, instead he was full of ecstasy. He felt the aquiline nosed man's hatred towards him. Zhang Xiao doesn't need to think about what would happen to him if he fell into the hands of the other party. And he can't even kill himself, even if he wanted to by that time. I was almost sliced by that sword light, Zhang Xiao had lingering fears. Unlike the others who only saw the sword light from a distance, Zhang Xiao, who was in the hands of the aquiline nosed man, was almost face to face with the sword light. Zhang Xiao knew that even if he was just scraped by the sword light, he might not be any different from the aquiline nosed man. Master is dead. The black clothed goons of the aquiline nosed man trembled, their faces full of fear. Although they didn't know what the sword light was, they knew the fact that the aquiline nosed man had died. What should we do now? The black clothed men glanced at each other, before retreating. Since the aquiline nosed man was now dead, their strength was greatly reduced. Not to mention killing the disciples, they might be killed themselves. Retreat. These black clothed men made their decision almost instantly. If the aquiline nosed man was still alive, they naturally wouldn't dare disobey the order of a grade 1 great grandmaster. But now that he was cut in half and couldn't be any more dead, when will they leave? Until they follow his footsteps? Sue, Sue, Sue. The black clothed men disappeared one after another. Though the disciples did not pay any attention to the black clothed men at all, instead, all their eyes were on Zan Ku. This is. Zan Ku also had a blank face. He was waiting to die just now. After all, with the strength of the aquiline nosed man, killing a middle realm like him is too easy. Was it the wooden sword that the venerable gave me? Zan Ku looked down at the wooden sword hanging around his neck. At this moment, the wooden sword returned to normal. Other than a few cracks on the edges of the wooden sword, it looked normal. The disciples cautiously walked over and stopped at a distance from Zan Ku. 
They only looked at him curiously, and didn't dare to say anything. They were all Heaven's chosen child in their respective sects. Although they don't know what the sword light was, they obviously know that it was related to Zan Ku. Little monk, Zan Ku, what happened? Zhang Xiao, who had just recovered from shock, walked over. When he asked this, the other disciples' eyes shined, and their ears perked up. They also wanted to hear what Zan Ku would say. What happened? Zan Ku could only blink, not knowing what to say. The wooden sword was given to him by the Venerable. The sword light just now could be put in the sword by the Venerable. At this time, a low voice sounded. Zhang Xiao, don't ask things you shouldn't know. The old Taoist priest came forward and fiercely glared at Zhang Xiao. The old Taoist priest then moved towards Zan Ku and bowed deeply under everyone's appalled gaze. Many thanks for the help. I and the Wudang Mountain will keep this in our hearts. If something happens in the future, we will definitely lend a hand. The words of the old Taoist priest came from the heart. However, these words were not for Zan Ku, but instead towards the existence that released the sword light. The old Taoist priest is a grade 2 grand master and he had accumulated knowledge from the Wudang Mountain all year round. So whether it was his eyesight or anything else, he was naturally far more capable in knowing what to do, compared to a young disciple like Zhang Xiao. Based on the sword light, the old Taoist priest can conclude that the rumors of the Shaolin Temple having an Arhat might be true. Other than an Arhat, who can bring out such sword light with great ferocity? When the elders of the other disciples saw this, their expression changed slightly, and immediately followed the old Taoist priest's actions. They moved towards Zan Ku, to be precise, moved towards the palm-sized wooden sword on his neck and then bowed deeply. After this incident, the disciples naturally have no interest in continuing to travel around the world. Under the supervision of their elders, they quickly returned to their respective sects. Especially the old Taoist priest from Wudang Mountain. How could he not know that the aquiline-nosed man came for Zhang Xiao? As for the other disciples, they were just affected by the Wudang Mountain's problems. The Wudang Mountain overawes the world and Taoist Zhang is a peak grade 1 great grandmaster who's standing at the peak of the world, yet they almost fell in the sewer. How could the old Taoist priest not get angry? Thinking of this, old Taoist priest hurried back to Wudang Mountain with Zhang Xiao to find out where the aquiline-nosed man came from and why he had a feud with the Wudang Mountain. Shaolin Temple. Back Mountain. At the moment when the palm-sized wooden sword hanging around the neck Zan Ku's neck released the sword light, Su Qin suddenly opened his eyes and looked in a certain direction. The sword intent was triggered. Su Qin wondered. The wooden sword he gave to Zan Ku contains a sword intent condensed by the Dharma sword art. Even if they were far apart, once activated, Su Qin could still roughly feel it. Are you in life-threatening danger? Su Qin's expression remained unchanged, while thinking silently in his heart. Only when Zan Ku encounters an unstoppable force will the sword intent be triggered. The crisis has now passed, Su Qin muttered to himself. The sword intent he left in the wooden sword can bring out three strikes in total. Su Qin felt through the sword intent in the wooden sword and determined that Zan Ku was now safe. Otherwise, the remaining sword intents in the wooden sword would continue to get sent out until all three strikes were exhausted. Chapter 84. Essence Gathering Holy Land. However, what on earth caused Zan Ku to be on the verge between life and death? Su Qin was slightly curious. Su Qin knows everything that happens in the Shaolin Temple, as if he's looking at the back of his hand. When Zan Ku left the Shaolin Temple, the Dharma court head also disappeared from the Shaolin Temple. Obviously, the Dharma court head was ordered by Abbot Wei Wen to secretly follow Zan Ku and protect him. Currently, the Shaolin Temple has only two grade 2, except for Abbot Wei Wen, who's grade 1. Meaning that assigning one of the only two grade 2 to protect Zan Ku is quite an investment. In fact, if Abbot Wei Wen could do it himself, he would probably do so. All this is because Zan Ku is very important to the Shaolin Temple. But despite having a grade 2 secretly protecting Zan Ku, the sword intent in the wooden sword was still triggered. Because of this, Su Qin showed interest. However, although Su Qin was a little curious, he was also not very concerned. It's a pity that since the sword intent and divine sense comes from me, if I die, the two would also disappear. Su Qin sighed lightly. This was one of the reasons why the Shaolin Temple continued to decline, 
despite having many arhats in the past. Perhaps when an arhat is alive, no one would dare to provoke the Shaolin temple, but once the arhat dies, everything would be different. No matter what happens, my strength is important, Su Qin muttered in his heart. As long as you are strong enough, then what can you not do in the world? Thinking of this, Su Qin once again immersed himself in cultivation. Ever since entering the third heavenly layer, Su Qin's cultivation progress has slowed down significantly. Though, the slow down is actually just equivalent to the speed when he was in grade 9. Compared with other arhats of the Shaolin Temple in the past or the legends, Su Qin's cultivation speed is astounding. Ha! Hu! The back mountain seemed to breathe with Su Qin. One day later, at the Dharma court, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads once again got together. Wei Ju's letter entails that Zan Ku encountered a grade 1 great grandmaster, Abbot Wei Wen said solemnly. Wei Ju is the Dharma court head. He belongs to the generation, Wei, Wei, alongside Abbot Wei Wen. The Dharma court head secretly followed Zan Ku and also left the Shaolin temple. The court heads knew this. After all, they discussed and came to an agreement with this. Although the Shaolin Temple is a great sect and ordinary forces won't dare provoke the Shaolin Temple, they cannot be too sure and just in case something happens. With Zan Ku's potential, coupled with Su Qin's guidance, even if he couldn't be able to achieve Arhat Buddhahood, he can at least reach the same height as Taoist Zhang and the imperial teacher of Meng Yuan. How could the Shaolin Temple just leave this precious genius alone? However, the court heads didn't expect that despite their preparation, Zan Ku still encountered danger. A grade 1 great grandmaster. Which grade 1 great grandmaster would dare to kill the Shaolin Temple's holy son? The martial monk court head was furious and stood up abruptly. The other court heads also wore ugly expressions. Facing the attack of a grade 1 great grandmaster, Zan Ku will not survive. No matter how great his potential is, he is still growing. Don't worry, Zan Ku is okay, Abbot Wei Wen said. He's okay, the court heads opened their eyes wide, they couldn't believe it. How did Zan Ku manage to survive against a grade 1 great grandmaster? The venerable gave Zan Ku a wooden sword before he left. It was this wooden sword that struck out and killed the grade 1 great grandmaster. A smile appeared on Abbot Wei Wen's face. Wooden sword? Killed the great grandmaster. The court heads looked at each other in blank dismay. The amount of shock they were feeling was immeasurable. They all knew the power of Su Qin very well. Let alone a grade 1 great grandmaster, even if you are a grade 1 great perfection, in front of the venerable, it is impossible to withstand a single blow. But what the court heads didn't expect was that Su Qin killed a grade 1 great grandmaster just by relying on a wooden sword and they were thousands of lees apart. Is he still a human? The venerable is indeed invincible. Even a grade 1 great grandmaster is nothing but an ant. The venerable is the reincarnation of the Buddha. How can we fathom his means? The disciplinary court head whispered, his eyes full of awe. It's time to sign in. Su Qin came to the scripture pavilion leisurely. During this period, in order to make up for the consumption of glazed golden cores, Su Qin has been signing in at the Bodhi court. It has been a long time since he came to the scripture pavilion. System, sign in. Su Qin said silently, Congratulations. Sign in successfully. Obtained the array diagram. Essence gathering holy land. Array diagram? Essence gathering holy land? Su Qin's eyes lit up. It should be some kind of heaven and earth array, Su Qin thought. After one steps into the Arhat or legend realm, one could gain insights from the heavens and earth, controlling its power. And they would create heaven and earth arrays from it. The effects of these heaven and earth arrays are different. Some lean towards stealth, some lean towards suppression, and some lean towards healing. For example, the demon subduing tower and the stone gate in Arhat Pao's tomb are guarded with heaven and earth arrays. In the past two decades, Su Qin has obtained dozens of heaven and earth formation arrays. And this essence gathering holy land is also some kind of heaven and earth array. Soon, Everything about the essence gathering holy land came to Su Qin's mind. After a while, Su Qin opened his eyes. This array is for gathering world's essence qi. Su Qin was extremely satisfied. This was the first time he has obtained such an array. Once one reaches the upper realm, one needs to use the world's essence qi. 
It is also at this time that the importance of the world's essence qi is revealed. The richer the world's essence qi, the greater the benefits to the martial artists. Even if one is an ordinary person, if he stays in a place full of world's essence qi for a long time, he will survive all diseases and prolong his life. The Shaolin Temple has produced many arhats, and their location naturally has sufficient world's essence qi. However, these world's essence qi are only enough for ordinary martial artists. In the eyes of a third heavenly layer arhat like Su Qin, they were not enough. Chapter 85. Enlightenment. Outside the Scripture Pavilion. Su Qin examined the essence gathering holy land array. If I want to set up this array, I would need 999 jades, Su Qin slightly frowned. No matter what kind of heaven and earth array it is, it needs a medium to create it. The essence gathering holy land is no exception. 999 jades, Su Qin thought for a while and prepared to let Abbot Wei Wen gather these materials for him. Shaolin Temple is a great sect with thousands of disciples. It should be easy to find the 999 jades that Su Qin needs. Su Qin explained this to Abbot Wei Wen in the courtheads, the latter were immediately attracted by it. This was the first time Su Qin has asked them to do something. So how dare Abbot Wei Wen and the court head slack off? On this day, Zan Ku finally returned to the Shaolin Temple. The return of Zan Ku naturally caused some shock in the Shaolin Temple, including Abbot Wei Wen. After the court heads met with Zan Ku, they asked him to go to the Back Mountain Forbidden Area and see Su Qin. Back Mountain Forbidden Area. Greetings Venerable. Zan Ku said respectfully as he moved towards Su Qin. If it weren't for the wooden sword given by the Venerable, Zan Ku would have died in the hands of the Grade 1 Great Grandmaster. It can be said that Su Qin had not only given him preaching grace, but also life-saving grace. Do you have doubts? Su Qin glanced at Zan Ku and pointed out. Maybe Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads couldn't see it, but with Su Qin's divine sense, Zan Ku cannot hide anything. Venerable, Zan Ku hesitated for a while, before he bowed his head and said, Disciple is confused. During the time he spent in the outside world, Zan Ku has been deeply enlightened and the doubts in his heart have become stronger. Tell me about it. Su Qin slowly said. Yes. Zan Ku took a deep breath, paused, and continued. Venerable, Disciple has found that all beings are after profit and gain. What's more, in order to achieve their goals, by fair means or foul, and even commit atrocities, they will do it. Disciple does not know whether this behavior is right or wrong. If it is wrong, why is no one seeking to correct it? Zan Ku raised his head and looked at Su Qin. Right or wrong? Su Qin smiled, he said, all things are bound by the law of heaven and earth, there is no right or wrong. You can think of it like a wolf eating sheep and sheep eating grass. Neither the wolf nor sheep is wrong for eating what they eat, which could possibly affect nature. The reason why you think whether it is right or wrong is because you think about whether it is right or wrong. It's all in your mind. Su Qin words were like bells that reverberated in Zan Ku's heart. There is no right or wrong. It's all in the mind. Zan Ku's eyes became brighter by the second, he had realized something. Many thanks venerable for enlightening this disciple. Zan Ku bowed deeply and said respectfully. Go down. Su Qin waved his hand and said. Yes. Zan Ku bowed back. Ai! Why are you already thinking about philosophy at such a young age? Su Qin shook his head. If you were to ask this question to ordinary people, even those high-ranking monks and holy monks, they may necessarily not be able to answer. But who is Su Qin? He's a human being that has lived two lives, he has all his knowledge from his previous life. How can he be stumped by Zan Ku's question? Zan Ku no longer has a knot in his heart, so he should be able to enter grade 1 great grand master before the age of 40. Su Qin thoughts. A 40-year-old grade 1 great grand master, although it is far from being compared with Su Qin, it certainly belongs to the top geniuses in the world. If there is enough opportunity in the future, he possibly can even touch Arhat Buddhahood. Of course, even if everything goes well, and Zan Ku gets close to the Arhat Buddhahood, it will still be one or two hundred years later. If compared to Su Qin's current cultivation speed, one or two hundred years later, even if he does not completely transcend the Arhat realm, at least he'll reach the pinnacle of the ninth heavenly layer. I hope you can grow up as much as possible before the scripture pavilion's Tao accumulation is exhausted, Su Qin thought. 
My little sister should also be living well in Chang'an, right? Su Qin raised his head slightly and looked towards Chang'an City. Since entering Arhat Buddhahood, Su Qin once quietly returned to Yan City, Kongzhou. It's just that when Su Qin got there, he learned that the Su family had moved to Chang'an. Though he's not at all worried regarding the safety of the Su family. Chang'an City is at the feet of Emperor Tang. And with the Prince Li Sheng there, how could there be trouble in the Su family? Furthermore, Li Sheng has now been conferred as the crown prince by Emperor Tang. As long as Emperor Tang does not die too soon, the Su family can sit back and relax. Apart from this, he also gave the jade pendant to his little sister which contained a strand of his divine sense. Through this strand of divine sense, even if Su Qin can't know what she has experienced, he can still roughly judge his little sister's state and whether she is safe or not. Divine sense is different from sword intent. Sword intent is a trace of Su Qin's strength, while divine sense is a part of Su Qin. To put it simply, if the sword intent in the wooden sword that Su Qin gave to Zan Ku broke out, Su Qin could only determine that the sword intent broke out, but couldn't determine why the sword intent broke out. That's why Su Qin didn't know what kind of enemy Zan Ku faced. But divine sense is different. If the divine sense in the jade pendant worn by Su Yuian breaks out, even if Su Qin is far away, he can roughly feel the situation on Su Yuian's side. And over the years, through the interaction with the jade pendant, Su Qin is very sure that Su Yuian is very safe, whether it is physically or mentally. She is living a good life. There is still a need for cultivation. Beyond the continent, in the depths of the endless ocean, there are still the unknown legends. My current strength is strong on this continent, but in terms of the entire world, I am not invincible. There's definitely powerhouses of the same level as the current me. Su Qin settled down and swallowed a glazed golden core. He closed his eyes and immersed himself in cultivation. At the same time, in Chang'an City, in a luxurious palace. It was bustling. Singing and dancing filled the joyous atmosphere. A man wearing a brocade robe was sitting upstairs. At this moment, the man has a gloomy expression, obviously suppressing some anger. What does Emperor Father mean? That offshoot was crowned Crown Prince. The man slammed the table in fury. Chapter 86, Building the Array. When the man exploded in anger, the singers and dancers all knelt on the ground in panic. None dared to raise their heads. His Royal Highness Chen, be careful, at this time, a middle-aged man who looked like a counselor hurriedly approached the man and said in a low voice, Eunuch Zhao was sent to take His Royal Highness to the East Palace, this was the imperial decree of His Majesty himself. His Majesty is really determined in this. The middle-aged man also quickly reminded, if Your Royal Highness Chen's remark is heard by His Majesty's ears, it will also be heard by Eunuch Zhao's. Hearing this, the man named His Royal Highness Chen's complexion changed. He glanced at the entertainers kneeling on the ground, his expression gradually calmed down. He said, go, drag them out. Yes. Suddenly, dozens of soldiers in black armor walked out and dragged away the extremely worried entertainers. Then what should I do now? Just watch as that offshoot sits on the throne. His Royal Highness Chen clenched his fists, he was unwilling. In the past few years, as Emperor Tang got older, the competition between him and the other princes grew. But even so, His Highness Chen was still fighting because he knew he had hoped to sit in that position. But now, with the canonization of a crown prince, didn't that make their previous struggle ridiculous? If it was among the other princes that was conferred as crown prince, even if His Royal Highness Chen was unwilling, he would not be as full of resentment as he is now. But Li Sheng, in the eyes of His Royal Highness Chen, Li Sheng is just an offshoot that popped out of some corner of the world. It is already a blessing that he can enjoy the royal heir treatment, but now he also dares to get involved in the struggle for sitting on the throne? His Royal Highness Chen, don't panic. The middle-aged man glanced around, lowered his voice and said, it's too early to talk about who's taking the throne right now. Oh? His Royal Highness Chen's eyes shined. He looked at the middle-aged man. Speak your mind. His Royal Highness Chen, the middle-aged man said deeply, His Majesty is already old. Even with the protection of eunuch Zhao, it cannot prevent anything from happening, let's say accidents. When His Royal Highness Chen heard this, his eyes immediately narrowed. You are right. His Royal Highness Chen looked at the counselor with a smile on his face. Father, he is old, Shaolin Temple. 
back mountain forbidden area. Su Chin sat cross-legged, looking at the thousands of top-grade jade stones in front of him. These top-grade jade stones were crystal clear and near transparent, making them almost invaluable. If they were placed outside, they could cause great shock. But at this moment, these jade stones were just like ordinary stones in front of Su Chin. The efficiency of the Shaolin Temple is indeed high. Su Chin was satisfied. He ordered Abbot Wei Wen to collect jade stones yesterday, and they had already arrived today. Plus, the number is more than the 999 he asked for. Since the jade stones have been gathered, then let's begin to arrange the array. Su Chin's thought moved and everything about the essence gathering Holy Land array surfaced in his heart. Although Su Chin is already considered to be very familiar with the essence gathering Holy Land array, as it was directly instilled by the system into his mind, this was still his first time trying to set up such a big array so it was necessary to be cautious. In case something goes wrong, these jade stones would end up being wasted. Time passed. Su Chin placed each jade stone in a special location in the back mountain. Finally, he used his divine sense to move several dozen li's worth of world's essence chi. This was the key step in creating the array. Whether it is the jade stones or other mediums, they were only an aid. The one that really determines whether the array can be formed nor not, is whether the divine sense of the creator is sufficient. Generally speaking, only an arhat or legend's divine sense can move the world's essence chi. Wang. With the continuous guidance of Su Qin's divine sense, the jade stones inlaid everywhere in the back mountain shone in splendor. Immediately afterwards, the endless world's essence qi surged from all directions. Suddenly, the jade stones shone even brighter while Su Qin continued to lead the world's essence qi. Bang! The world's essence qi in the back mountain condensed into a mist, constantly surrounding the back mountain, slowly moving towards all directions and spreading. At this moment, the Shaolin Temple disciples subconsciously look towards the back mountain. Look, the back mountain appears foggy, one Shaolin Temple disciple cried out in surprise. In the past few years, although abnormal events have repeatedly occurred in the back mountain, most of them were world's essence qi gatherings that will soon disappear. But this was a fog that lasted for a long time. The back mountain looked like an immortal's realm, it's the first time they have seen such a thing. What happened? Why is there fog in the back mountain? The disciples subconsciously approach the back mountain's direction, their faces full of curiosity. Huh. No, this fog is weird. A certain Shaolin temple disciple subconsciously inhaled the fog and his face changed. The fog he inhaled was just a small part of the divine sense fog floating from the back mountain, but even so, the Shaolin temple disciple felt an icy cold breath fill his body, which was very comfortable. I feel it too. This fog is a good thing. I feel that the injuries I received during practice are getting better. Is it possible that this fog is a mortal chi? The Shaolin Temple disciples were surprised and they spiritedly discussed among each other. At the same time, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were shocked to the extreme. This fog, its world's essence chi condensed? The martial monk court head was dumbfounded and his voice trembled. They were in the upper realm and had already experienced the world's essence qi washing their body. They naturally understood the benefits of the world's essence qi to martial artists. The other court heads looked at each other. Should we go to see the venerable and ask what is going on? After a while, the disciplinary court head suggested. At this moment, the fog was too eye-catching. Even if they knew that Su Qin was unwilling to be disturbed, they had to brace themselves to go and ask. Back Mountain Forbidden Area Su Qin sat cross-legged. If the world's essence qi outside the back mountain was condensed into fog, then here, the fog was about to form into a substance. Under such an environment, Su Qin feels that the true essence in his body was circulating much faster. No wonder many arhats and legends like to create these heaven and earth arrays, it turns out that there are such great benefits. Su Qin felt that every piece of his flesh and blood was cheering excitedly. Then, Su Qin's gaze turned to outside the back mountain. They are here too. Under the cover of Su Qin divine sense, it was natural that he found Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads, who were standing outside the back mountain hesitating. They didn't know whether they should come in. Come in. Just when Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were pushing the duty of calling for the venerable on each other, a calm voice resounded in their ears. The venerable permits us to go in. 
The martial monk court head expressed his joy, and he cautiously walked into the back mountain. Abbot Wei Wen followed closely, along with the other court heads. As they got deeper, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads could feel that the world's essence Qi was getting richer. Finally, they saw Su Qin sitting cross-legged. He was surrounded by white mist. He looked like a god, like the Buddha. Greetings Venerable. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads bowed. Chapter 87 to 300 Years of Prosperity. Get up. It was only after Su Qin said this, did Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads dare to straighten their waists a little bit. But even so, they still lowered their heads, not daring to look at Su Qin directly. Venerable, there's this fog outside the back mountain, Abbot Wei Wen cautiously organized his words. In Abbot Wei Wen's mind, the young monk sitting cross-legged in front of him is a disciple of the younger generation, but an arhat that is at the top of the world. He is the reincarnation of the Buddha. He is destined to break the limits of the world in the future. Fog? That's just the byproduct. Su Qin didn't really care much about it. This fog was nothing but a natural phenomenon that's produced by the condensation of world's essence qi into a substance. It's not a real fog. Byproduct, the court heads looked at each other. They felt surreal. They quietly inhaled a breath of the fog outside just now, and they could clearly perceive the benefits it brought upon to themselves. Especially for the Arhat court head. When he was young, he spent most of his energy on external work, resulting in some internal injuries in his body. These internal injuries accumulate. Although there was nothing happening right now, when the Arhat court head gets older, the repercussions would shoot itself. The Arhat court head was also worried about this, but there was nothing he could do. The internal injuries were deep in his body. Unless he enters grade 1 and transforms his body, it will be difficult to get rid of them. But now, just after inhaling a few breaths of the fog, the Arhat court head actually felt that his internal injuries slowly improved. Although there was still some distance from complete recovery, at least it will not continue to deteriorate. For him, the fog is comparable to an immortal pill, and yet in Su Qin's mouth, it was just a byproduct that's not worth mentioning. The court heads were speechless and didn't know what to say for a while. They were all martial artists of the upper realm, and were being washed by the world's essence qi every day. Of course they recognized that the fog was the condensation of world's essence qi. However, recognizing is recognizing but actually seeing or experiencing it is another, and it was simply incredible. Since you are already here, let's talk about something. Su Qin glanced at Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads. He said, each day, some of the fog will spread in the back mountain. You can choose some disciples or yourselves to absorb it. Once the essence gathering holy land array is set up, it will draw world's essence qi. The world's essence qi is then compressed by the array to form substance, and the byproduct, which is the fog, would overflow outside the array. Compared to the substance formed from the world's essence qi, the fog was far inferior. Nonetheless, it still has a great effect on those middle realm disciples and even to the upper realm court heads of the temple. It can nurture their body, improve their cultivation and so on. Su Qin reminded Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads about this because they can't just waste anything needlessly. In any case, Su Qin doesn't want the fog anyway. And the fog would just naturally dissipate. Hence, it's better to make use of it to better help the Shaolin Temple. However, Su Qin undermined how shocking the words he just said towards Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads. The fog was not like medicinal pills that's gone after eating them. In their understanding, the fog should be being produced continuously. Even if they absorbed it all today, more will still appear tomorrow. What does this mean? This means that this was an inexhaustible treasure. Many thanks, Venerable. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads moved towards Su Qin and deeply bowed. At this moment, besides gratitude, there was awe. You all can go out. Su Qin said. The essence gathering holy land has just been formed and he still has not had time to sink his heart to experience it himself, as he was approached by Abbot Wei Wen and the others. Now that he has finished explaining, Su Qin naturally chased them away. Yes. Abbot Wei Wen and the others respectfully retreated. It's a pity that I still need to personally maintain it every once in a while. Otherwise, at most, in 20 years, the effectiveness of the array will continue to decrease and after a 100 years, it will completely become an abandoned array. Su Qin thought silently. This kind of world's essence qi gathering array was not like those concealing and suppression arrays. 
The latter is only in a very small range, which means it only has small fluctuations and does not need to be adjusted constantly, so it can survive forever. Especially the concealing array, which can last for almost a 1000 years, such as the secret room where Pao Arhat passed away. It was not discovered by Su Qin until 900 years later. 900 years after the battle, it can still avoid Su Qin's divine sense. But the essence gathering holy land array is different. It spans several dozen li, moving large amounts of world's essence qi. And once world's essence qi is transformed by the array, the essence gathering holy land array will naturally have to make corresponding changes. Su Qin closed his eyes, immersing himself in cultivation. At this same time, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads walked out of the back mountain. Abbot Wei Wen stopped and looked back at the slowly diffusing fog. This fog can only last for 50 years, but it can protect the Shaolin Temple and give it 300 years of prosperity. Abbot Wei Wen sighed and said softly, 50 years? 300 years of prosperity. The other court heads were shocked and looked at Abbot Wei Wen in disbelief. They had already overestimated the possible influence of the fog on the Shaolin Temple, but according to Abbot Wei Wen, it seems that the importance of fog was far more than their imagination. You don't believe it? Abbot Wei Wen glanced at the court heads, shook his head and continued. I have estimated that under this kind of fog, within ten years of cultivation, the upper realm martial artists of our Shaolin Temple will give birth to at least two grade one great grandmasters within twenty years. In fifty years, the number of great grandmasters in our temple will number eight to ten. With so many great grandmasters, the number of powerhouses born in our temple will only increase. If this continues, the 300 years of prosperity will probably be even an underestimation. Abbot Wei Wen said slowly. The court heads were dumbfounded. Especially when they heard that the number of grade 1 great grandmasters will reach 8 to 10 50 years later, it was incredible. This is a grade 1 great grandmaster they were talking about. In today's world, only a whole strong country could have such a large number of great grandmasters. Chapter 88. Exhausted Scripture Pavilion. The court heads were shocked knowing that the fog was more than a pie falling down from the sky. They questioned Abbot Wei Wen instinctively, but after thinking about it, what Abbot Wei Wen said made sense. With the fog, after 50 years, as long as there is no major change, the Shaolin Temple was indeed very likely to give birth to grade 1 great grandmasters. Let's go back and arrange for the disciples to absorb the fog. Otherwise the fog would disappear for today. The Dharma court head glanced at the other court heads, who were still in shock, and said. When he said this, the court heads regained their bearings. Not only can the disciplines absorb the fog, but they, the court heads, can also absorb the fog. Especially the Arhat court head and martial monk court head, who were at peak grade 3. They could step into grade 2 through the fog. Thinking of this, everyone became enthusiastic. Back mountain forbidden area. Half a day later. Su Qin was sitting cross-legged, the fog resembled a dragon as it poured into Su Qin's body. Hu, ha! Every time Su Qin breathed, he looked like a godly beast. The fog formed a vortex which was then absorbed by him. The effect is good. At this time, Su Qin's eyes slowly opened, he was relatively satisfied. At this moment, the world's essence qi around him was almost a hundred times greater than that of world's essence qi in other places. By being here, it can greatly improve his own cultivation speed. Moreover, there's the endless supply of glazed golden cores. To some extent, Su Qin's strength was constantly improving. But, breaking through to the fourth layer is much more difficult than I thought, Su Qin slightly frowned. Even in such a good cultivation environment, Su Qin still can't see where the peak of the third heavenly layer was, as if this realm had no upper limit. I am still too weak. If I were at the ninth heavenly layer, my divine sense would have been enough to envelop thousands of miles or even ten thousand of miles worth of area in the essence gathering holy land array. By then the world's essence qi gathered would be massive and this place could be compared to an immortal's house. Su Qin sighed. Essence gathering holy land array is divided into levels. The lowest level covers several li. The second level covers several dozen li. Then so on and so forth upwards to several hundred li to several thousands li and several tens of thousands of li. If a venerable who has just entered the Arhat realm does not know about the essence gathering holy land array, at most he can only gather the world's essence qi of several li. 
But at this moment Su Qin has reached the third heavenly layer and his divine sense is far greater than that of the first heavenly layer. The layout of the essence gathering holy land array naturally reached the second level, covering several dozen li. Unfortunately, the essence gathering holy land array cannot be stacked on each other, otherwise I really would like to create more. Su Qin shook his head, but this is okay for now. At least my cultivation speed is definitely far ahead of the past Shaolin Temple Arhats. Even, there is no one that is faster than me in its whole history. Throughout the past and present, there may be some legends or arhats that have gotten arrays similar to the essence gathering holy land that gathers world's essence chi, but there should be no one who was constantly eating glazed golden cores. Not to mention that Su Qin also possesses past Amitabha Sutra, that enabled him to refine world's essence chi almost endlessly. Still, it's not good to aim too high at the moment, let's take it slowly. Su Qin closed his eyes again, and operated, past Amitabha Sutra. Late at night, the full moon hung high in the dark sky. Su Qin stopped his cultivation. I can now sign in. Su Qin thoughts moved. He walked out of the back mountain and came to the scripture pavilion. System, sign in. Su Qin said silently, congratulations. Signed in successfully. Obtained, descending demon pearl supreme divine art. Notice. The Tao accumulation of this area has been exhausted, and it will become a non repeatable sign in area. Consecutive cold sounds rang in Su Qin's ears. Descending Demon Pearl Supreme Divine Art. Non repeatable sign in. Su Qin looked at the scripture pavilion and felt complicated. Su Qin has been in the Shaolin Temple for nearly 30 years, and Su Qin has since signed in at the scripture pavilion. But now, the scripture pavilion that has been with Su Qin for many years, was finally exhausted of its Tao accumulation. Although he had known that this was coming, since the demon subduing tower's Tao accumulation also ran out. Still, when this day actually came, Su Qin couldn't help but sigh with emotion. The scripture pavilion's Tao accumulation is gone, and the Bodhi court is probably coming up soon. Su Qin thought. Although the Bodhi court is the center of the Shaolin temple, in terms of Tao accumulation, it shouldn't be much more than Scripture Pavilion. In addition, since Su Qin cannot sign in at the Scripture Pavilion in the future, all of his sign-in opportunities will be used at the Bodhi Court. When I can't sign in at the Bodhi Court anymore, I should go out. Although he has been in the Shaolin Temple for almost 30 years, he wasn't that reluctant to leave. The main reason is that Su Qin thought that he had already left enough for the Shaolin Temple. Not only did he help Zhang Ku fix his Buddha's heart, but he also often gives pointers. He was basically cultivating a future grade 1 great perfection for the Shaolin Temple. Apart from this, Su Qin will also leave the essence gathering holy land array in the back mountain. This array can last for 20 years before it starts declining and it will only be completely abandoned 100 years later. Not to mention that Su Qin has secretly saved the Shaolin Temple multiple times. Just as Su Qin was thinking about this, every bit of information about Descending Demon Pearl Supreme Divine Art flooded Su Qin's mind. After a while, Su Qin's eyes opened. Not bad. Su Qin slightly nodded. Descending Demon Pearl Supreme Divine Art is a divine art that can condense 24 beads with its true essence to suppress all demons and monsters. A 1000 years ago, a certain arhat from the Shaolin Temple used this divine art to kill a certain demonic path legend. Although it is said that legends are not often not seen in several eras, they have a 500-year lifespans, far exceeding the length of an era. Therefore, if you are lucky enough, you can see existences of several legends living at the same time. Of course, if you are unlucky, you may not be able to produce even a single legend for several eras. Condense. Su Qin lifted his right hand and condense a bead in accordance with the Descending Demon Pearl Supreme Divine Art. The bead vaguely revealed an aura. It's time to go back. Su Qin felt satisfied. From the perspective of power, this divine art is probably ranked in the top 200 of the divine arts that Su Qin has obtained over the years. It is rare. Chapter 89. Go down the mountain. Su Qin returned to the back mountain forbidden area. Although the Descending Demon Pearl Supreme Divine Art is a good divine art, Su Qin did not spend much thought on it. After all, Su Qin knows that any divine art will still depend on the user's cultivation base. Time passed, 
Su Qin once again returned to his peaceful days. Sign in, cultivation, insights about the heavens and earth, and occasionally giving pointers to Zan Ku. Of course, Su Qin only guided Zan Ku and did not select a future path for him. Cultivation, especially when it reaches the level of Grade 1 Great Grandmaster, those who copy another will die. Each Grade 1 Great Grandmaster can only go in his own way and be unique, achieve his own transformations and achieve a peak Grade 1. Zan Ku has a Buddha's heart and is naturally intelligent. So even if he is taught by a Grade 1 Great Perfection, it is impossible to influence him. But Su Qin is different. He is an Arhat at the third heavenly layer, his every move will have an indelible effect on Zan Ku. Perhaps these influences are good for Zan Ku, but there may be disadvantages. Hence, Su Qin simply let it go. Only giving a few words when Zan Ku was in doubt and let him develop on his own. At the same time Su Qin was immersed in his cultivation, the disciples of the Shaolin Temple have also undergone extremely significant changes. The back mountain was filled with fog. Every disciple who has been in the temple for more than 10 years can get close to the back mountain and cultivate. With the fog, even those martial artists who have not been exposed to world's essence qi could feel their body being nurtured and becoming stronger. On a certain day, patrolling monk Zhen Ji came back from the cultivating near the back mountain and saw several other disciples whispering about something. What are you talking about? Zhen Ji walked over and asked casually. Even at this moment, Zhen Ji was still amazed at the effect of the fog. Zhen Ji has been in the temple for at least a decade and was naturally qualified to cultivate near the back mountain. At first, Zhen Ji didn't take it seriously. After all, what can a fog do? But when he actually experienced it himself, Zhen Ji clearly felt the changes in his body. He even faintly felt that he has become much more vigorous. How incredible is this? The vitality of a martial artist gradually increases from birth until it reaches a peak and then falls back. Perhaps because of practicing martial arts, the peak would be extended for a period of time. It's just that if there is no other major breakthrough, the decline of the martial artist's vitality will be irreversible after the peak has passed. Originally, Zhen Ji was in this situation, and his vitality had begun to decay. If there's nothing, his strength will not be improved in the future, and his achievements in this life will stop here. But now, Zhen Ji actually feels that there was a slight upward trend of his vitality. The fog, Zhen Ji once again pictured the back mountain forbidden area that was shrouded with the fog, it looked ethereal. Hearing Zhen Ji's question, the disciples quickly raised their heads and said to Zhen Ji, Senior brother Zhen Ji. Senior brother Zhen Ji, we are talking about the back mountain and venerable. A disciple glanced around first, before he said with a lowered voice. There was a tint of awe. Venerable? Zhen Ji frowned. Is the venerable someone you can discuss at will? Senior brother Zhen Ji, we absolutely do not mean to disrespect the venerable. We were just curious, what kind of person the venerable is? The disciple quickly replied, fearing that Zhen Ji would think he disrespected the venerable. I don't dare to know. Zhen Ji glanced at the disciples and shook his head. What kind of person is the venerable? You don't need to think too much, just remember that the height of the venerable is no longer understandable by me nor any other mortals. At the same time, Wudang Mountain. Many Wudang Mountain disciples were gathered in front of an ancient great hall. These disciples have already traveled down the mountain and explored the world. At this moment all these disciples were standing here, as if waiting for someone. Is the master coming out? A Wudang Mountain disciple trembled while looking at the ancient hall in the distance, whispering amongst each other. Martial uncle said so. Zhang Xiao, who was standing beside the disciple, replied in a low voice. Why would the master come out? A second Wudang Mountain disciple turned his gaze and looked at Zhang Xiao. Taoist Zhang could dominate the world for decades without leaving the mountain. That's why this disciple couldn't figure out why Taoist Zhang suddenly announced his exit at this time. Zhang Xiao thought for a while and said, Some time ago, while I was on my travels, I encountered an enemy of Wudang Mountain. The enemy was a grade 1 great grandmaster and wanted to kill me. Speaking of this, Zhang Xiao paused for a bit before continuing. Maybe the master wants to go out and avenge me? Impossible. The Wudang Mountain disciple shook his head. Master is in retreat to achieve breakthrough, common things cannot disturb master. If you died, then master may leave and avenge you, 
but since you are not dead he wouldn't do that. The other Wudang Mountain disciples nodded. Taoist Zhang will protect the face of Wudang Mountain, but since Zhang Xiao is fine, Taoist Zhang will definitely not go out because of this. Creek, at this time, the disciples suddenly saw the door of the ancient hall open silently. A man wearing a Taoist robe walked out slowly. His skin was white like jade, his eyes were clear and one couldn't tell his age. His movements were also meticulous and had a peculiar charm. When this man came out, the Wudang Mountain disciples bowed together and shouted. Congratulations on Master's exit. Congratulations on Master's exit. Their voices reverberated through the sky. Taoist Zhang looked around, then opened his mouth and said. You all get up. Taoist Zhang doesn't have any aura in his body, as if he was just an ordinary person. Master, did you break through? A Wudang Mountain disciple couldn't help but ask. When the other disciples heard this, their expressions changed and looked at Taoist Zhang closely. If Taoist Zhang really took the step and passed, then Wudang Mountain will continue to dominate the world for another 300 years. Breakthrough. Taoist Zhang laughed. He shook his head and said, how difficult is achieving the legend realm? Even if I go in retreat for 100 years, I won't be able to break through. Why did the master exit this time? A disciple cautiously asked. To go down the mountain. Taoist Zhang raised his head, looked in the direction of Shaolin Temple, and whispered, and seek help. Chapter 90. Seek the Venerable. To go down the mountain. And seek help. Taoist Zhang's tone was flat, but when he said the second sentence, there was some faint expectation in his voice. Seek help? The Wudang Mountain disciples looked at each other and were confused. In their eyes, Taoist Zhang is at the top of the world, why would he need to go down the mountain and seek help? Only Zhang Xiao and his group realized something. There were rumors that the Shaolin Temple has an arhat, but in the eyes of the overwhelming majority of martial artists, it was all just rumors and false. However, Zhang Xiao and his group knew that the Shaolin Temple indeed has an arhat. If they didn't have an arhat, then who else could kill a grade 1 great grandmaster from thousands of miles away with just an ordinary wooden sword pendant? Taoist Zhang's exit this time should be because he had heard of the news. If I don't come back this time, Wudang Mountain will close its doors 20 years, even getting revenge is not allowed. Taoist Zhang's eyes looked at the Wudang Mountain disciples. Next, he went down the mountain. At the Shaolin Temple. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were overjoyed. In just a few months, among the disciples who had cultivated near the back mountain, three of them had entered the upper realm. How rare was this? Even as a great sect, an upper realm is substantial and is enough to serve as a court head. In the past, it would take at least 10 or 20 years for the Shaolin Temple to give birth to three upper realms. But now, it only took a few months to complete, how can this not make Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads happy? The more martial artists in the upper realm, the greater the probability that a grade 2 or grade 1 great grandmaster will appear. They can then in turn use this to promote the sect gain a large number of potential disciples and then repeat the process. As a result, the Shaolin Temple will become stronger. I am overwhelmed. These three upper realm disciples are the accumulation of the temple in the past years. They are all in peak grade 4 and were only one step away from the upper realm. With the fog, they made a breakthrough. Giving birth to another upper realm in the same amount of time is impossible. The Dharma court head slowly said, the other court heads who were immersed in joy suddenly calmed down. Wei Ju is right. Abbot Wei Wen slightly nodded. Although he was equally happy, he also thought of this. The main reason why the three disciples became upper realm in a short time was due to the previous accumulation. This won't happen again, at least not as fast. Abbot. I should be able to break through. At this time, the martial monk court head said. Do you want to break through? Abbot Wei Wen looked towards the martial monk court head, expressing his surprise. The martial monk court head is a grade 3 martial artist. If he breaks through, he will become grade 2. Apart from Su Qin who's an arhat, the Shaolin Temple currently only has one grade 1 which is Abbot Wei Wen and two grade 2. If the martial monk court head becomes grade 2, the foundation of the Shaolin Temple will naturally increase. Just when Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were happily discussing amongst each other, a Shaolin Temple disciple hurried in. Abbot, court heads, someone is outside and is asking to see you. 
The disciple was gasping for breath as he reported. See us. Abbot Wei Wen slightly frowned. Who? He said he was from Wudang Mountain, surnamed Zhang. What? The court head's eyes shrank. Wudang Mountain. Surnamed Zhang. No matter how surreal the thought was, the court head subconsciously thought of Taoist Zhang. Let's go out and have a look. Abbot Wei Wen immediately stood up and walked outside. The court heads glanced at each other and immediately followed. Soon, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads arrived outside the temple. At this moment, a man wearing a Taoist robe was standing there quietly. Sure enough, it is Taoist Zhang. The court heads were surprised and felt that it was unbelievable that this was happening right now. Taoist Zhang. Abbot Wei Wen took a breath, stepped forward and solemnly greeted. Although he is a grade 1 great grand master, he was not on the same level as Taoist Zhang to meet him at eye level. Abbot. Taoist Zhang looked calm and gentle, he slightly nodded. What brings Taoist Zhang to the humble Shaolin temple? Abbot Wei Wen asked. When this old man was young, he wandered through the world and was fortunate enough to obtain a half book of the Nine Yang Divine Art from the Shaolin Temple. Taoist Zhang did not answer Abbot Wei Wen directly, instead, he replied, This half book of the Nine Yang Divine Art is very helpful to the old man. When Taoist Zhang said this, he stretched out his right hand and took out a book. Only with this half book was I able to create the Tai Chi Heart Sutra. So it is only right to give you this. Tai Chi Heart Sutra. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were dumbfounded. The Tai Chi Heart Sutra was written by Taoist Zhang with a painstaking amount of effort. Even though there are many disciples in Wudang Mountain, only a few can learn Tai Chi Heart Sutra. But now, Taoist Zhang was giving the Tai Chi Heart Sutra to the Shaolin Temple? Taoist Zhang, please take it back. Since the Nine Yang Divine Art has been out to the world, it has nothing to do with the temple. Abbot Wei Wen quickly thought and without the slightest hesitation, he rejected the Tai Chi Heart Sutra. Although the Tai Chi Heart Sutra is good, it is on the Taoist path. Even if Shaolin Temple obtained it, it is useless. On the contrary, what Taoist Zhang was meaning is more important as he even brought out the Tai Chi Heart Sutra. Taoist Zhang shook his head slightly, but did not retract the Tai Chi Heart Sutra. Apart from this, speaking of this, Taoist Zhang's eyes suddenly flashed a different light. This old man came here to seek the venerable. Seek the venerable, Abbot Wei Wen's complexion changed. Taoist Zhang is a bit late. The venerable has said that he will not see anyone as of this moment. Abbot Wei Wen was silent for a while and slowly said. It's okay. This old man can wait. Taoist Zhang was extremely free and easy. Wait. Abbot Wei Wen's brows tightly frowned. If Taoist Zhang, the master of Wudang Mountain, was waiting at their door, wouldn't it be a loss of face for the Shaolin Temple? Taoist Zhang, please go back. Abbot Wei Wen sighed lightly. Since you know that there is a venerable in my temple, are you not afraid that the venerable will attack you? Abbot Wei Wen's words were mixed with some warning. I am the one who asked, so death is okay. Taoist Zhang smiled. As long as I see the venerable, everything else doesn't matter. Taoist Zhang had clear eyes and a serious expression on his face. This, Abbot Wei Wen's expression was grave. In this case, the Shaolin Temple can only ask for pointers with Taoist Zhang. Abbot Wei Wen slowly circulated his internal strength and looked directly at Taoist Zhang. Taoist Zhang wants to see the Venerable, but with the status of the Venerable, how can anyone just easily see him when they want to? If that were to happen, where would the face of the Venerable go? Where would the face of the Shaolin Temple go? Even if Abbot Wei Wen knew that he was far from Taoist Zhang's strength, he would still desperately stop him. Seeing this scene, the court heads also secretly operated their internal strength, ready to take action at any time. When Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads of were about to strike, a sigh suddenly sounded. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were surprised, and subconsciously looked towards the back mountain. Taoist Zhang did the same raising his head slightly and looked towards the back mountain. At this time, Taoist Zhang saw an unforgettable scene. He saw the originally calm back mountain suddenly become tall and majestic. At the highest point, a figure sitting cross-legged appeared. This figure was like the Buddha. That's. Taoist Zhang was shocked, his vision began to blur, and his consciousness fading. Chapter 91. A Frog in a Well. 
At this moment, Taoist Zhang felt like an ant that's looking up at a god. Puff. Taoist Zhang's consciousness soon faded and he fell to the ground. Venerable. Many thanks venerable. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads could barely react amidst their shock. They faced towards the back mountain and bowed deeply. After a while, all of the natural phenomenon gradually disappeared. The strength of the venerable is becoming more and more unimaginable, Abbot Wei Wen sighed softly and said with emotion. So far, Abbot Wei Wen has seen Su Qin strike twice. The first one was when he killed the demon lord and the second one today against Taoist Zhang. If Su Qin's first strike felt like the vast heaven and earth to Abbot Wei Wen. Then now, Abbot Wei Wen feels that his strike was like an endless void that encompasses everything. The heavens and earth is vast but it is still limited in the end, however the void is endless. Of course, if you count the other times as Su Qin making a move, it is certainly more than two. For example, when he broke through the Dharma court, rescuing Abbot Wei Wen from cultivation deviation, and that time with Zan Ku. It's just that in the eyes of Abbot Wei Wen, these were not really, strikes, per se. Yes, the court heads heard this and they nodded in agreement. The Venerable is indeed incredible. A peak grade one like Taoist Zhang can move unhindered in the world, but he didn't even stand a chance against the Venerable. If it weren't for the Venerable, we wouldn't have been Taoist Zhang's opponents, the martial monk court head whispered. Although the foundation of Shaolin Temple has greatly increased nowadays, there were two more grade 2 martial artists and a grade 1 holy monk like Abbot Wei Wen, along with thousands of Shaolin Temple disciples and so on. But if they want to block Taoist Zhang, it is as difficult as heavenly ascension. There's a reason why a peak grade 1 great grandmaster overawes the world. It is very much superior when compared to a grade 1 great grandmaster. The latter would just be suppressed by absolute strength. Otherwise, why did the demon lord dare to attack the Shaolin temple a few years ago and threatened to destroy it? The court heads looked at each other and felt very grateful. At this moment, the disciplinary court heads seemed to have remembered something and asked, Abbot, what should we do about Taoist Zhang? The other court heads and Abbot Wei Wen also remembered this problem and looked towards Taoist Zhang lying on the ground. The Dharma courtyard had braced himself. He cautiously approached and took a glance, he said, he's not dead, he just fainted. The court heads didn't know what to do. Since the venerable has kept his hand, let's send him back to Wudang Mountain. After deliberation, Abbot Wei Wen said. Not bad. I agree. The court heads agreed. In their eyes, if Su Qin had murderous intentions, Taoist Zhang would have been dead long ago. How could it be that he just fainted if that was the case? Since Taoist Zhang is not dead, it means that the venerable kept his hands, in this case, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads would naturally follow Su Qin's intentions. Let's do this. I will have someone send Taoist Zhang back later. Abbot Wei Wen finalized the decision. Back Mountain Forbidden Area. Taoist Zhang. Su Qin was sitting cross-legged and a trace of emotion flashed deeply in his eyes. Once upon a time, Taoist Zhang was still a great character that Su Qin could only look up to. So I am already that strong. Su Qin thought silently in his heart. Taoist Zhang, who was once an unattainable existence, couldn't even bear a trace of his aura and fainted immediately. However, Taoist Zhang is better than the Demon Lord in terms of fighting strength. Su Qin compared Taoist Zhang against the Demon Lord and concluded that Taoist Zhang was better. In fact, whether it is Taoist Zhang or the Demon Lord, both of them are peak grade 1 great grandmasters that have been transformed themselves twice. In any era, they are considered as dazzling stars. But unfortunately they met Su Qin. Taoist Zhang's Tai Chi is interesting. If there are enough opportunities in the future, it may not be possible for him to reach grade 1 great perfection, Su Qin speculated. Su Qin's evaluation of Taoist Zhang was quite high. After all, so far, Su Qin believes that only Zan Ku is able to do this. This is because Zan Ku now has a complete Buddha's heart and is often guided by him. Since Taoist Zhang can walk to this step on his own, this just shows that he is a peerless talent. As for whether Taoist Zhang can go further, Su Qin can't exactly say. Each Arhat or legend breaks through in a different way, and it is impossible to judge which strand of qi they would grasp from the heavens and earth. Wudang Mountain. Taoist Zhang was not fully sent back by the Shaolin Temple disciple. That's because in the middle of the journey, 
Daoist Zhang had already woken up. After a short silence, Daoist Zhang asked the escorting Shaolin Temple disciple to go back, and he returned to Wudang Mountain alone. Along the way, Daoist Zhang's mind kept replaying the scenes he had seen in the Shaolin Temple, especially the figure that looked like a real god at the last moment before he lost consciousness. Soon, Daoist Zhang was back on Wudang Mountain. When the disciples saw Daoist Zhang, they were overjoyed and immediately gathered around. They looked at Daoist Zhang with concern. Master, are you okay? A Wudang Mountain disciple couldn't help but ask. They saw that there was something wrong with the Taoist Zhang's expression at the moment, and he seemed to be in a trance. I'm fine. How could I not be? Taoist Zhang shook his head and said with a bitter smile. In his trip, he did nothing, and he did not even have a trace of injury. However, only Taoist Zhang knew in his heart that he might not be able to escape the shadow of the god-like figure in his life. Master, what did you see when you went to the Shaolin Temple? Zhang Xiao squeezed in front of Taoist Zhang and asked cautiously. Before Taoist Zhang left, he only left a sentence about going down the mountain to ask for help, which left many Wudang Mountain disciples puzzled for a long time. But Zhang Xiao guessed that Taoist Zhang was probably going to Shaolin Temple to go see the Arhat. What did I see in the Shaolin Temple? Taoist Zhang repeated in a low voice, a trace of mockery appeared on his face. This old Taoist always felt that even if a real legend strikes at me, it would still take him a few moves before he could defeat and kill me. But now, Taoist Zhang slowly raised his head and looked towards the Shaolin Temple. It seems that this old Taoist is just a frog in a well. Chapter 92. Peak Third Heavenly Layer. Tao Accumulation Exhausted. Shaolin Temple. Back Mountain Forbidden Area. The back mountain was shrouded in fog. The fog was nothing in Su Qin's eyes but in the hearts of many disciples of the Shaolin Temple, it was no different than God's work. I'm nearing peak third heavenly layer, Su Qin's eyes slowly opened, he muttered with a hint of joy on his face. After continuously cultivating, Su Qin finally neared peak third heavenly layer. It is said that the fourth heavenly layer will have a qualitative change. Su Qin touched his chin and thought. In the nine grades, there are three divisions the lower realm, middle realm and upper realm. This was not simply a division and it is also because there are certain aspects in between realms that change. For example, below the upper realm, a martial artist only needs to polish his body with internal strength. But if you want to enter the upper realm, you need to let go of the barrier between the body and the heavens and earth, letting the world's essence chi wash your body. This step is very critical. This is why many grade 4 martial artists couldn't break through the upper realm. The same is true for the third heavenly layer into the fourth heavenly layer. I thought it would take me at least a few years to reach peak, but the supply of glazed golden cores plus the past Amitabha Sutra made it happen sooner, Su Qin thought. The essence gathering holy land array had indeed helped Su Qin by a lot, at least it shortened his accumulation time. Since this is the case, let's just step directly into peak third heavenly layer. Su Qin made up his mind. Stepping into peak third heavenly layer was not like breaking through a realm. As long as Su Qin was cautious, there would be no danger. In addition, Su Qin always uses the Millennium Bodhi Heart as protection, so unless Su Qin kills himself, it is impossible to have any accidents. Soon, Su Qin was immersed in cultivation again. Hong Long Long. The world's essence Qi in the entire back mountain began to gather towards him. A few days passed in an instant. In these few days, other than signing in, Su Qin was always immersed in cultivation. As he continued, Su Qin's aura became more and more transparent, as if it blended into the void. Did something happen to the venerable? Zan Ku stood outside the back mountain and muttered to himself. Usually Su Qin would occasionally give him advice, but during this time, Zan Ku didn't even see Su Qin's face, let alone get advice. But Zan Ku doesn't care about getting advice right now. What he is worried about is, are there any problems with the venerable? Although in the eyes of Zan Ku, Su Qin is no different from a real god, an accident can always happen and who knows when it will occur. Just when Zan Ku hesitated on whether to enter the back mountain forbidden area or not, the entire back mountain undulated. Immediately afterwards, all the fog that filled the sky poured into a certain place deep in the back mountain. This is. Zan Ku was taken aback. As the holy son of the Shaolin Temple, 
he naturally knew that this so-called fog is condensed from world's essence qi. Zan Ku knew that ever since the fog appeared outside the back mountain, there has never been a day when all of it disappeared. Is it possible that something has really happened to the venerable? Zan Ku's expression changed. But just then, da da da, there was a faint sound of footsteps. Zan Ku looked subconsciously and saw Su Qin walking outside. Venerable. Zan Ku was overjoyed, and immediately greeted him. Get up. Su Qin indifferently said. At this moment, Su Qin's true essence was constantly changing, rising and condensing. Finally peak third heavenly layer. Su Qin sighed in his heart and looked towards Zan Ku. Do you have any doubts about your recent cultivation? Su Qin asked. Then he paused for a moment, and continued. If I am not in the Shaolin temple in the future, everything will depend on you. When Su Qin said this, Zan Ku's originally delightful expression suddenly froze. Venerable, are you leaving the temple? Zan Ku was silent for a while, and plucked up the courage to ask. Su Qin looked up at the sky and slowly said, that's only natural. Can the venerable take me? Zan Ku immediately eagerly said, I can do anything for the venerable. What would you do with me? Su Qin shook his head and said, I have my road to travel, while you have yours. Besides, it's not like we are never going to meet each other ever again. When you become an arhat in the future, you can come and find me. Su Qin had a smile on his face and looked at Zan Ku. If Zan Ku manages to surpass all the previous Buddha's heart owners of the Shaolin Temple and become an arhat, then Su Qin does not mind accepting him as a disciple. Yes. Venerable, I will work hard. Zan Ku clenched his fists and said seriously. Su Qin saw Zan Ku's expression and laughed. He then took a step and disappeared. When Su Qin reappeared, he was already in front of the Bodhi court. Many disciples were coming and going, but they all, subconsciously, ignored Su Qin, as if Su Qin doesn't exist at all. Su Qin then walked into the Bodhi court and said silently, System, sign in. Congratulations, sign in successfully. Obtained, nine revolutions whirling pill. Asterisk 100. Notice. The Tao accumulation of this area has been exhausted, and it will become a non-repeatable sign in area. Sure enough, the Tao accumulation is exhausted, Su Qin was silent. In fact, even before signing in today, Su Qin already had a feeling that this might be the last time he can sign in here. The scripture pavilion and Bodhi court's Tao accumulation should not be much different. Since the Tao accumulation of the scripture pavilion has already been exhausted, the Bodhi court will not last long even if it still has some left. However, this last sign-in gave me 109 revolutions whirling pills which are definitely worth hundreds of sign-ins. Su Qin's thoughts moved, and his mind browsed through the system storage. Seeing the additional 109 revolutions whirling pills in the corner, his mood became better. Even though Su Qin has accumulated pills over the past 30 years, there are now only about 609 revolutions whirling pills. This is what he had saved. And now there are 100 more. Su Qin was naturally happy. Chapter 93. Leave. Not bad, not bad. 109 revolutions whirling pills. Even if I eat one a day, it is enough for me to use for half a year. Su Qin slightly nodded. The medicinal power of the nine revolutions whirling pill is even better than the glazed golden core. Even for the current Su Qin at this moment, digesting a nine revolutions whirling pill would take ten days to half a month. Hence, in fact, 109 revolutions whirling pills were enough to last Su Qin for several years. It looks in every last sign in of an area, it is very likely to give good things, Su Qin thought. For example, the last sign in at the demon subduing tower gave Su Qin the demon suppression seal, which is the bane of demonic path martial artists. Even the likes of the demon Buddha couldn't resist this treasure. There is also the scripture pavilion. Su Qin's last sign in gave him the descending demon pearl supreme divine art. This divine art belongs to the offensive type of divine arts. It can create 24 beads and suppress the enemy. Its strength is enough to rank in the top 200 among the many divine arts Su Qin obtained. It's time to leave. Su Qin lingered in the Bodhi court for a bit before going back to the back mountain. Dharma Court. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were discussing about cultivation. This had become their habit. The martial monk court head was particularly happy. He just made a breakthrough yesterday and officially entered grade 2. 
Now that we have three grade two and one grade one, even if we are compared amongst other great sects, we are not weak anymore, the Arhat court head said. Compared with the difficult situation of the Shaolin temple decades ago, the current situation is akin to that of a dream. All of this is because of the venerable, Abbot Wei Wen sighed with emotion and said slowly. Indeed, if it were not for the venerable, the Shaolin temple would have been destroyed by now. The court heads nodded and immediately agreed. At this moment, a calm and leisurely voice suddenly rang in their ears. You all come to the back mountain. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were naturally surprised. Venerable. Why does the venerable want us to go in the back mountain? The court heads of course, were puzzled. The venerable wanted them to go to the back mountain. This is something that has never happened before. Even the muscle-headed martial monk court head realized that something was wrong. Don't think too much. Since the venerable wants us to come, we shall go. Abbot Wei Wen shook his head and got up. He then moved towards the back mountain. The court heads glanced at each other and then followed Abbot Wei Wen. Soon, Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads arrived at the back mountain. Greetings venerable. Abbot Wei Wen bowed and said respectfully. Greetings venerable. The same goes for the court heads. Get up. Su Qin waved his hand and said. I called you this time because I have something to say. Su Qin said. Today I will leave the Shaolin temple and travel the world. When his words came out. The expressions of Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads froze instantly. Needless to say, I have already decided on this matter. Su Qin looked at them and added. Yes. The expressions of Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads were dim. The Shaolin Temple has been in existence for thousands of years, and the Arhats from past generations have chosen to travel the world for a period of time. Therefore, although Abbot Wei Wen and court heads were reluctant, they accepted it. After all, for an Arhat, traveling around the world is also a kind of cultivation. If they block it, it is tantamount to destroying the cultivation of the venerable. No one dares to bear this kind of sin. After I leave, no one is allowed to enter here. Su Qin paused for a while and continued. He arranged the essence gathering holy land array in the back mountain and does not intend to destroy it when he leaves. After all, as long as the jade stones are enough, Su Qin can make another one somewhere else. As for why Su Qin would not let others enter here, it is because the concentration of the world's essence qi here is too high. If a martial artist under Arhat cultivated here, he would explode from overloading. Su Qin doesn't want to find blood around when he comes back. Yes. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads nodded. The back mountain is the dwelling of the venerable. Even if Su Qin didn't mention this now, they will nonetheless make this place a forbidden area. Venerable, when are you coming back? At this moment, the martial monk court head couldn't help but ask. He asked this question from the bottom of his heart, he didn't have any hidden agendas. When will I be back? Su Qin laughed and did not reply. For Su Qin, even if he does return to the Shaolin Temple in the future, he will just come back quietly without disturbing anyone. Okay, you all go down. After Su Qin said that, he slowly closed his eyes. Su Qin asked Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads to come over just to inform them all. After all, he has been in the Shaolin Temple for nearly 30 years, and he should at least say a word before leaving. Yes. Abbot Wei Wen and the court heads bowed before turning to leave the back mountain. Leave everything that should be left, and do everything that should be done, then I can leave. Su Qin thought silently in his heart. For the Shaolin Temple, or for any great sect in the world, the most important thing is always the people, not the divine arts. For example, in the Shaolin Temple, even though the scripture pavilion contains countless divine arts, if it were not for Su Qin, this generation wouldn't even have a grade one great grandmaster, making the divine arts useless. Half a day later, Su Qin left the Shaolin Temple quietly. Outside the Shaolin Temple, the sky is high and the earth is wide. Su Qin traversed several hundred meters and slowly moved towards a certain direction. Ha 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 ha. It's been so long since I've came out. Every time Su Qin took a step, his hair grew and just a few steps later, his hair was already at his shoulders. His eyes were bright, and his skin was like jade, he did not look like an old-fashioned monk at all. Whether it is an arhat or legend, they can do this and even if they have a broken limb they can regenerate it, let alone grow hair. Chang'an City is the ancient capital of ten dynasties and has a long inheritance. 
Its Tao accumulation should be a lot more than the Shaolin Temple. It should be my next sign in area. It just so happens that the Su family is also there. Su Qin stopped, thought for a while, then moved towards Chang'an City and hurried away. Chapter 94. Chang'an Fireworks, Chang'an City. At this time, it was the Shangyuan Festival. Fireworks were blooming all over the sky and it set off the atmosphere of Chang'an City. On the stargazing building, Emperor Tang invited his officials to gather here, drinking wine and enjoying the sky full of fireworks. The princes were also there, including Crown Prince Li Shang. Shangyuan Festival, I don't know if I can still see the next one. Emperor Tang looked at the sky and muttered to himself. His majesty is bound to live forever, why wouldn't his majesty be able to see the next festival? The ministers hurriedly knelt on the ground and dare not look up. He he. Emperor Tang glanced at them and a touch of ridicule appeared on his face. All of the ministers are right, I was just being emotional. Yunyan. I feel that Emperor Father's body has deteriorated again. Crown Prince Li Sheng peeked at Emperor Tang and whispered to Su Yuyan next to him. When Su Yuyan heard this, her pretty face changed slightly. She shook her head and said, You shouldn't say this outside in the future. Crown Prince Li Sheng lightly sighed. How can he not know this? The ministers were saying that His Majesty will live long, but he felt that His Majesty's body has deteriorated. If this was to be heard by others and spread it out, it will have a great influence on his position as Crown Prince. It's just that Li Shang really cares about Emperor Tang's body. Although Li Shang has only known Emperor Tang for a few years, he could feel that Emperor Tang is sincere towards him. And since His Majesty made him the Crown Prince, he obviously wanted to give him the throne. Emperor Tang had treated him with kindness and even grandness by planning to make him his successor, so how could Li Sheng have the heart to be like those ministers, openly deceiving Emperor Tang? His Majesty knows this better than anyone else. Su Yuyan hesitated for a while and whispered, Who is loyal to the court and who is pretending, His Majesty knows this better than you. For now, take care of your own affairs and try to stabilize your position as the crown prince. As for other things, don't think too much, because it's useless even if you think about it. Su Yuyan glanced around, lowered her voice and said quickly. Since she and Li Sheng entered the East Palace, Emperor Tang often came to visit them. Although Su Yuyan didn't talk much with Emperor Tang, she could also see that he was already half a foot inside the coffin. Moreover, she believes that Emperor Tang knows everything about what's going on in the court. Soon, Emperor Tang seemed to lose interest and ended the gathering. The officials went back to their homes. Su Yuyan hesitated for a while, before finally moving towards Li Sheng and said, My parents are waiting for me, so I won't go back to the palace. Okay. Li Sheng nodded. It was the Shangyuan festival and since Su Yuyan wanted to go back to the Su residence to meet her family, how could he stop her? I won't go, so as to not disturb you, Li Sheng said considerately. He is now the crown prince. If he returned to the Su residence with Su Yuyan, the Su family would not have a good time celebrating the festival. After the two separated, Su Yuyan looked towards the Su residence. Since Su Yuyan was conferred as the crown prince's wife, the Su family had become a relative of the emperor, and they have been given a mansion by Emperor Tang. The mansion is now the new Su residence. Dad and Mom, I'm back. Su Yuyan walked towards the Su residence. Yuner, you are finally back. I have been waiting for you for a long time. The Su family patriarch, Su Shimon walked over and said with a smile. Mother Su Mu also stood up with a smile on her face. Sister, you are back. Her two brothers also came and greeted her. They then sat down and were ready to eat, chatting amongst each other. Sister, His Majesty asked you to go to the stargazing building to enjoy the fireworks. It must be beautiful, right? Su Chenggao the eldest son of the Su family, said with envy. The stargazing building is the tallest building in Chang'an City. According to legend, you can see the entire Chang'an City from it and capture all the beautiful scenery in your eyes. Beautiful? Su Yuyan shook her head. I think it is the most beautiful to watch the fireworks from here. Okay Cheng Gao, your little sister finally came back. You are the older brother, don't always mention these things. Su Shimin gave Su Cheng Gao a stare. Father, it's okay. Su Yuyan said with a smile. That's right, sister. At this time, second brother Su Chengyu suddenly asked curiously, Do you like that jade pendant? I think it's quite ordinary. 
Su Chengyu glanced at the jade pendant on Su Yuyun's waist, with a face full of confusion. In his opinion, that piece of jade pendant is extremely ordinary and worth at most 10 yuan. Not to mention that Su Yuyun is now the crown prince's wife, she is also the daughter of the Su family, she can't be wearing such jewelry. This jade pendant, Su Yuyun looked down and shook her head. I don't know why I like it, but when I first saw it, I really wanted to keep it. Su Yuyun paused and continued. I feel that as long as I have this jade pendant, I can always be safe and happy. Su Yuyun's words made Su Chengyu look helpless. Sister, you have been deceived. There is no jade pendant in this world that can keep people safe and happy. Su Chengyu was about to say a few more words, but when he saw Su Shimin fiercely staring at him, he shrank back and did not dare continue speaking. The family ate and chatted. After finishing the meal, Su Chengao suggested going outside and taking a look at the market in Chang'an City. This proposal was obviously approved by the family. Their entire group then walked out of the Su residence and came to the market. While watching the fireworks blooming in the night, they watched the vendors on the side of the road. If only third brother could be here, it would be great. Su Yuayun's expression dropped significantly. The Shangyuan festival is meant to reunite the whole family, no one should be missing, but their Su family was obviously missing Su Qin. I told the county guard to go negotiate with the Shaolin temple, but then there were new rumors that the Shaolin temple has an arhat. Su Shimin sighed softly. Originally, when Su Yuian became the crown prince's wife, their Su family was next to the thigh of the imperial family, and Su Shimin was planning to get Su Qin out of the Shaolin temple. He asked the county guard for his help, and the latter even patted his chest, assuring him that everything would be okay. But then, rumors about the Shaolin temple having an arhat suddenly appeared and that he had killed the demon lord in one fell swoop. Ever since then, the county guard never mentioned this again. Although Su Shimin was unwilling, there was nothing he could do about it. He is also a martial artist and knows the meaning of an arhat. At this moment, even Emperor Tang would not try and mess with the Shaolin temple, let alone trifling a county guard. There will always be a way, Su Yuian barely smiled and said. Just then. While walking, Su Yuian suddenly slipped. She was distracted, so she totally forgot to regain her balance and was about to fall to the ground. Yuner. Su Shimin immediately noticed this, so he hurried forward and prepared to support Su Yuian. However, a slender figure was ahead of him and grabbed Su Yuian in front of Su Shimin. Be careful when you walk. This figure was covered with light. No matter if it was Su Yuian or the rest of the Su family, they couldn't see the figure's specific appearance. After this figure stabilized Su Yuian, it moved towards the opposite direction of the Su family. Thank you. Su Yuian subconsciously wanted to thank the figure. But then the next moment, Su Yuian was stunned as a sense of intimacy rose from the depths of her blood. Wait a minute. Su Yuian turned around and shouted towards the figure who was about to leave. Su Shimin, along with the rest of the family, saw Su Yuian's reaction and also looked towards the figure, puzzled. The figure paused, seemingly hesitating, but then finally turned around slowly. Under the stars and fireworks, nothing more beautiful can be imagined. The figure slowly turned around, moved towards Su Yuian and the others then smiled. Sister, long time no see. Chapter 95. After 30 years, he is still a young. The fireworks in Chang'an City continued to bloom. Su Qin stood in the same place with his hands behind his back, smiling at Su Yuian and the other Su family members. When he came to Chang'an City this time, Su Qin's primary objective was to find a new suitable sign in area, and secondly, to meet the Su family. You are. Su Yuian opened her eyes wide when she saw Su Qin. She felt that the man in front of her was familiar, but she couldn't think of who it was. Su Qin was only three years old when Su Qin was sent to the Shaolin Temple. That was almost thirty years ago, her childhood memories have long been blurred. You are. Are you Chinner? Su Shimin asked with a trembling voice. Unlike Su Yuian, Su Shimin immediately recognized Su Qin when he first saw Su Qin. When Su Qin entered the Shaolin Temple, he was still ten years old. But even in the past thirty years, Su Shimin can still see the shadow of the ten years old Su Qin at this moment. Chinner, is it third brother? The two brothers, Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu looked at each other, they also couldn't believe it. It's me. Su Qin replied, it's really third brother. 
Third brother. When did you arrive in Chang'an? The two brothers immediately ran to Su Chin. They looked at him up and down, still half surprised. Chinner. What the hell is this? Su Shimon strode forward and looked at Su Chin in disbelief. As soon as he said this, Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu also looked at Su Chin curiously. I have been in the Shaolin Temple for almost 30 years. I didn't want to stay any longer, so I came out. Su Chin calmly said, You didn't want to stay anymore. Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu looked at each other in blank dismay. It was incredible. The Shaolin Temple is a great sect and a few years ago, it was even rumored that there's an Arhat there. How could such a monster easily let a disciple leave? Chinner, tell me honestly. What is going on? Did you commit a crime or something and escaped? Su Shimon solemnly asked. This is what Su Shimon was most worried about. He was afraid that Su Qin did something wrong. With the current status of the Shaolin Temple, if Su Qin really made a big mistake in the Shaolin Temple, who can protect him? Father, if I really made a mistake, can I even leave the Shaolin Temple? Su Qin shook his head and replied. When Su Shimin heard this, his expression eased. Indeed. After all, what is the Shaolin Temple? If there is no permission from the abbot, how can Su Qin leave? Ha 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 ha. I didn't expect that today's Shangyuan festival will be the day that our family finally reunited. Su Shimin was in a good mood. Little Qin, how did you know that our Su family moved to Chang'an? Su Chenggao asked curiously. This, Su Qin had already thought about what he should say before and replied, I went back to Yan City first and then heard from the people there that you are here. N, so that's how it is. Su Shimin slightly nodded. It is not a secret that the Su family moved out of Kongzhou. Just ask someone and you'll find out. Little Chin. This time our Su family really upgraded. Guess who younger sister is married to? It's the crown prince. Our Su family is now the emperor's relatives. Su Chengyu immediately shared this with Su Qin. Third brother. Su Yuayun's pretty face was full of joy. They chatted for a while, with Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu asking questions. After chatting, everyone had no more doubt about Su Qin's identity. After all, if by coincidence, there might be two people who look the same in the world, but the real Su Qin would obviously know everything about the Su family. There were even some things that if not for Su Qin, even Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu would have forgotten. Brother, after so many years, why do you look so young? Su Yuian looked at Su Qin a little enviously. Su Qin was sent to the Shaolin Temple when he was 10 years old, and now it was almost 30 years later. It stands to reason that Su Qin at this age should be in his middle age and will have some vicissitudes of time. But Su Qin now has bright eyes, long black hair, and jade skin. He is almost more energetic than a 20-year-old youngster. The others also discovered this and they also clicked their tongues in wonder. Perhaps it's because the Shaolin Temple has the blessing of the ancient Buddha and it is isolated from the world, so maybe it delayed aging? Su Qin said. An Arhat can keep their youth forever, and an ordinary person can also live longer if he stays away from worldly disputes. It seems so, Su Shimin sighed with emotion. Su Qin's statement is very reasonable. But how many people in the world can abandon everything in the world and are willing to enter an isolated place like the Shaolin Temple to keep themselves young? Little Chin, I heard that there is an Arhat in the Shaolin Temple. You have been in the Shaolin Temple for so long, have you seen him? Su Chenggao suddenly thought of something and asked with interest. For them, an Arhat or legend is too far away from them. It is no different from myths and legends. If it were not for Su Chin, they would not have mentioned it at all. When Su Shimon heard this, his eyes also lit up. Chinner, have you seen the Arhat? What kind of person is he? When Su Shimon asked this, his voice was lowered by a lot. He was afraid that the Arhat would hear it from here. Su Chin thought for a moment, and said seriously, he's nothing special, he's almost like me. When Su Chenggao heard this, he almost choked from his saliva. Little Chin, you really know how to joke. The other Su family members also chuckled thinking that Su Qin probably has never seen the Arhat. Chinner, don't say such things in the future. An Arhat's strength spans across the heavens, he might come to know of what you said. Su Shimon reminded Su Qin. The Su family then returned to the Su residence. By the way, Chinner, what do you plan to do after coming back? Su Shimon hesitated for a while before asking. With the current status of the Su family, 
Even if Su Qin doesn't do anything, the family can easily support him in his lifetime. But Su Shimon, as a martial artist, hates those rich children who can only eat and drink. That is why he made Su Chenghao and Su Chengyu join the army early. Little Qin, come to the army too, I can recommend you to the general. Su Chenghao immediately suggested. That is not good. Little Qin does not have martial Dao aptitude. If he really joins the army, not only will it be difficult to get promoted, it will just be hard for him overall. Su Chengyu shook his head and rejected it. The rules in the military are simple, whoever has the biggest fist is the boss. Since Su Qin is weak, he will definitely not end up well. Su Yuian hesitated for a while and then said, maybe I can say something to his highness and let third brother go to the palace. His highness is currently short of staff, third brother can go to the east palace to be a counselor. Don't worry, he'll just do it in name and he won't really need to do anything. Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu agreed with her suggestion. As a counselor for his highness the crown prince, the salary and so on would be good, it's at least better than being a soldier in the army. Chinner. What do you think? Su Shimin was also satisfied with this, he looked at Su Qin and asked. If Su Qin is unwilling, the Su family will not force him. The Imperial Palace. Su Qin slightly raised his head and looked towards its direction. Chapter 96. The Imperial Palace. Su Qin agreed to Su Yuyun's suggestion. His purpose in coming to Chang'an City was to find new sign in areas. Looking at the entire Chang'an City, only the Imperial Palace can have a large number of Dao accumulation. After all, only the Imperial Palace has been retained to this day throughout the Ten Dynasties. Although with Su Qin's strength at the moment, unless there is a legend in the palace, going there is as simple as eating and drinking. But anyway, it's good to have some identity. At least Su Qin will have a reason to go in and out of the palace freely in the future, and not just in secret. Okay. I'll talk to His Highness when I go back tonight." Su Yuyun was very concerned about the affairs of her third brother, and after returning to the East Palace, she mentioned this to Crown Prince Li Shang. Crown Prince Li Shang naturally agreed without the slightest hesitation. Moreover, Su Qin is Su Yuyun's third brother, meaning that he is Li Shang's brother-in-law. The next day, Su Qin moved into the East Palace. In order to please Su Qin, his brother-in-law, Crown Prince Li Shang even arranged servants to Su Qin. It is worthy of its reputation, regardless of the layout or its other aspects, it is almost perfect. Su Qin was standing in the attic as he looked at the entire imperial palace, slightly nodding in his heart. Compared to the ancient feel of the Shaolin Temple, the imperial palace has majesty. I hope you will not disappoint me, Su Qin's eyes flashed with expectation. One month passed in a blink of an eye. In this month, Su Qin visited a small part of the palace. Sure enough, as Su Qin expected, he can sign in at the Imperial Palace. To Su Qin's surprise, the number of sign in areas in the Imperial Palace was much more than that of the Shaolin Temple. In the Shaolin Temple, only the Demon Subduing Tower, Scripture Pavilion, and Bodhi Court were eligible for repeated sign ins. At the Imperial Palace, there were at least five places. He said at least, because there's still a lot of places that Su Qin did not sign in yet, the palace was too big. Currently, the places where Su Qin had signed in includes the Long Life Temple, Stargazing Building, Primal Chaos Palace, White Jade Square and Crop Altar. For example, at the Long Life Temple, Su Qin obtained a volume of Longevity Secret Art. Longevity Secret Art is a Taoist divine art which claims to be able to prolong one's life. Every hundreds of years, there will be reports of some lucky person who had obtained longevity secret art and was able to live longer for decades, even hundreds of years. The only pity is that the longevity secret art's barrier of entry is too high and it requires the eluding physique. Because of this, it is hard to get close to the stage of one with heaven and earth in longevity secret art. How rare is the eluding physique? There is only one in a million people who have it, it's even rarer than a grade one great grandmaster. In other words, even if someone else gets longevity secret art, it is likely that they will not be able to get started. But Su Qin is different. With the system, the so-called entry threshold of longevity secret art can simply be ignored. On the night of obtaining longevity secret art, Su Qin had already started cultivating it. In the following month, Su Qin relied on his arhat level and quickly cultivated longevity secret art, 
to great accomplishment, extending his life by 200 years. 200 more years, Su Qin was full of joy. 200 years plus his original 800 years, Su Qin can now live a full 1000 years as long as he doesn't die in some accident midway. And this was based on the premise that Su Qin will not make any further progress in the next 1000 years. A 1000 years, Su Qin looked somewhat emotional. Even the Tang Empire has only been around for more than 500 years. Su Qin is basically equivalent to two Tang empires. Not bad, not bad. Su Qin was extremely satisfied. The only regret is that the longevity secret art entry barrier is too high to be popularized. Even if Su Qin had already cultivated it to great accomplishment, it was impossible for others to learn it. In addition to obtaining longevity secret art at the Long Life Temple, Su Qin also obtained star traction technique outside of the stargazing building. Star traction technique can use the power of billions of stars to either kill the enemy or for the user's protection. Of course, star traction technique also has very high requirements for users, and one must at least be grade 1 with divine sense to be qualified to cultivate it. And even if it is a peak grade 1 that uses it, he can only use a few stars at most, and the effect would not be too great. It has the same effect as the lunar body refining technique. Su Qin touched his chin and a thoughtful look flashed in his eyes. Lunar body refining technique can draw the power of the moon, while the star traction technique can draw the power of the stars. Perhaps other people think that the moon is the moon and the stars are the stars, the two are not the same thing. But Su Qin knows for a fact that the moon, even the sun, is just a star. The difference between them is only the distance, that's all. Apart from this, Su Qin signed in at the White Jade Square and obtained the White Jade True Body. He also obtained innate spirit liquid from the crop altar and so on. White Jade True Body is a body refining technique similar to Invincible Vajra Divine Art. So Su Qin was not interested in this. With his current body, even if he cultivated White Jade True Body, to the great accomplishment, there will be no improvement. Instead, it was the innate spirit liquid from the crop altar, which made Su Qin delighted. Innate spirit liquid is a magical liquid formed between heaven and earth. It is extremely rare. It is often only found when an arhat or legend travels all over the world to find it and if you're lucky, you'll get two drops. Despite only getting a drop, the effect of innate spirit liquid is very large. It can greatly improve the progress of cultivation at the arhat level. Su Qin tried to drink a drop after obtaining it and the result was a sudden increase in strength. If it weren't for Su Qin's timely suppression, he would have broken through unintentionally and he would have been at the fourth heavenly layer right now. One drop of innate spirit liquid is probably comparable to ten glazed golden cores, but it is easier to absorb. Su Qin was amazed. With past Amitabha Sutra, a glazed golden core will take Su Qin several days to fully absorb it. But the innate spirit liquid is different. Not only is it ten times more effective than a glazed golden core, it also saves Su Qin a lot of refining time. This then leads to terrifying cultivation speed. Sure enough, it's the best choice to go out and explore. If I continued to stay in the Shaolin Temple, I wouldn't have obtained such treasures. Su Qin couldn't help but smile. Chapter 97, Fate Will Soon End. No, I can't just be satisfied with this, there are still many places in the Imperial Palace that I haven't signed in yet. Su Qin thought. Although with his strength, it does not take long to visit the Imperial Palace, but he can only sign in once a day. It should take me about half a year to sign in at every place in the Imperial Palace. Su Qin estimated in his mind. On this day, Su Yuian asked Su Qin to eat with her and Crown Prince Li Shang. Su Qin did not refuse. Anyway, today's sign in opportunity has been used up, and he had nothing to do for the time being. Soon, Su Qin came to Chungin Hall. Chungin Hall is the place where the Crown Prince lives in the East Palace. After Su Qin arrived, Crown Prince Li Sheng and Su Yuian were already there. Brother, here. Crown Prince Li Sheng moved toward Su Qin and beckoned. He faced Su Qin without the majesty of being the Crown Prince and instead, he was just like a normal relative. Third brother, how's your stay in the palace so far? Are you getting used to it? After Su Qin took his seat, Su Yuian asked with concern. Although everything is good in the palace, it is too depressing and cold. 
This was why the two brothers, Su Chenggao and Su Chengyu, preferred to join the army. For some people who were hyper and lively, working in the palace is tantamount to being in prison. That's why Su Yuian asked this question, How am I? Su Qin thought of innate spirit liquid, longevity secret art, white jade true body, and star traction technique, and nodded. He replied, Very good. It's good that third brother is getting used to being here. Crown Prince Li Sheng slightly nodded and said with a smile, I was talking to Yuner about this just now. Crown Prince Li Sheng patted his head and said, Third brother, let's eat. Today's meal is carefully prepared by the imperial chef. Though, Su Qin really doesn't mind what he eats. Ever since he attained Arhat Buddhahood, he has long reached the level of not needing to eat to supplement his energy. Of course, although there is no need to eat, it does not mean that Su Qin will not eat. Just then, a court lady hurried in. His Highness, His Majesty is here. Crown Prince Li Sheng's expression changed slightly. Father is here? Crown Prince Li Sheng immediately got up to meet him. He then saw that Emperor Tang had already strode in. Emperor Tang waved his hand and said, No need for formalities, I am just taking a look. Please. Crown Prince Li Sheng quickly gave up his seat to Emperor Tang and sat aside. Who's this junior? Emperor Tang looked at Su Qin. Crown Prince Li Sheng immediately replied, Your Majesty, he is Yuner's third brother. He has only recently returned to Chang'an, that's why you have never seen him before. Oh, it's the Su family, Emperor Tang nodded and did not ask much. However, when Su Qin looked at Emperor Tang, his brow slightly wrinkled. Su Qin clearly felt that Emperor Tang's body had long degraded. Even a martial artist in the upper realm wouldn't be able to live longer. Is it because of him? Su Qin's eyes turned to the purple clothed eunuch next to Emperor Tang. With Su Qin's eyesight, he can see that this eunuch is a peak grade 1 great grandmaster with both body and divine sense transformed. It's a pity, Su Qin just glanced at the purple clothed eunuch and he didn't look more. The purple clothed eunuch had already transformed his body and divine sense, but because he is now lacking life essence, he wouldn't be able to achieve grade 1 great perfection. If the demon lord or Taoist Zhang might have the chance to enter grade 1 great perfection, then this purple clothed eunuch had completely cut off his hope. Longevity secret art. Su Qin opened, eyes of truth, and instantly saw the reason why Emperor Tang was still alive, even though his body was empty. With Emperor Tang's current body, he should have died long ago, but he was pulled back by the purple clothed eunuch with longevity secret art. In other words, what's keeping Emperor Tang alive at this moment is not his own life essence, but the life essence of the purple clothed eunuch. In a way, the longer Emperor Tang lives, the less life essence the purple clothed eunuch will have left. Knowing this, Su Qin couldn't help but respect the purple clothed eunuch. But it makes no sense, Su Qin slightly shook his head. Longevity secret art is extremely complicated. To put it into perspective, for every year that Emperor Tang continued living, the purple clothed eunuch will consume three to five years of his life essence. Even if it is a close relative, there are very few people who would be willing to exchange their life for another's. Moreover, with the strength of a purple clothed eunuch, no one can force him to use this secret technique, meaning this is out of his own free will. But still, Emperor Tang will not live long. Just when Su Qin was thinking, Emperor Tang sat down. It's rare for me to drink wine. Tang Huang's eyes suddenly brightened as he was about to take a sip. Your Majesty, please take care of your body. Crown Prince Li Sheng was anxious and immediately dissuaded him. Take care of my body? Isn't my body good? Tang Huang put down the wine glass and frowned. He then looked at Su Qin. Yuner's third brother, tell me, how is my body? Su Qin looked at Emperor Tang, he nodded at first but then shook his head again. Oh? What do you mean? Tang Huang asked with interest. Do you really want to know? Su Qin asked back, of course. Emperor Tang nodded. Su Qin was silent for a while, before he said, fate will soon end, aka he'll die. The Chung'in Hall fell into dead silence. Crown Prince Li Sheng opened his eyes wide and looked at Su Qin in disbelief. He didn't expect that Su Qin would dare say such things in front of the emperor. Your majesty, he is just kidding. Crown Prince Li Sheng immediately tried to intercede for Su Qin. And then, ha 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 ha. Emperor Tang burst into laughter. 
Interesting. Really interesting. A trace of sarcasm appeared on Emperor Tang's face. I didn't expect that something that the officials, princes and ministers were afraid to say, was easily said by a junior. Emperor Tang laughed for a while, and after a few coughs, his mood returned to normal. Come here. Emperor Tang said, Your Majesty. A young eunuch walked up and stood respectfully on his side. The brave shall be rewarded. Emperor Tang took a deep look at Su Qin and got up and left Chung'an Hall. According to His Majesty, the young eunuch bowed slightly and left Chung'an Hall. He then returned shortly afterwards and loudly said, One shall be rewarded with 100 tails of gold and an ancestral jade pendant. Crown Prince Li Sheng and Su Yuyan glanced at each other. They could not react to what had just happened. Chapter 98 I'll borrow your place for a while. Chung'an Hall. Crown Prince Li Sheng couldn't help but blink his eyes in shock. When Su Qin uttered the words regarding Emperor Tang's fate, he was ready to welcome His Majesty's anger. But, His Majesty was not angry at all and instead gave Su Qin a reward. This, this, Crown Prince Li Sheng couldn't believe it. Brother, what the hell is going on? Su Yuyan barely recovered from her shock. What you said to His Majesty, is that true? I stayed in the Shaolin Temple for so long and learned some medicine. Su Qin casually found a reason. From the looks of Emperor Tang, he is indeed dying. When Su Yuyan heard this, she and Crown Prince Li Sheng subconsciously glanced at each other, there were tremors in their hearts. But what Su Yuyan and Crown Prince Li Sheng didn't notice was that Su Qin called His Majesty as Emperor Tang, and not His Majesty. His Majesty is what a lower person of lower status would use and even potentially mean acknowledgement of allegiance. However, Emperor Tang was like, May, and even meaning that you don't care at all. After coming out of Chung'in Hall, Su Qin walked slowly along the road of the Imperial Palace. This Emperor Tang is interesting. Su Qin thought of the hundred tails of gold in the ancestral jade pendant rewarded to him by Emperor Tang. Alas, he is about to die. Su Qin shook his head and no longer continued this train of thought. Even if there was a grade one great grandmaster who would continue to extend Emperor Tang's life regardless of the cost, it was useless. Comma. Su Qin resumed his daily life. The imperial palace is quiet and Su Qin is also backed by the crown prince, so as long as he doesn't take the initiative to cause trouble, almost no one would dare to trouble him. It's currently late at night. The full moon hung high in the sky. Before I left the temple, I already achieved peak third heavenly layer. But I suppressed it because I felt that entering the fourth layer comes with great risks. Su Qin thought. From the third to fourth heavenly layer, one will undergo some kind of qualitative change. It's completely unlike breaking through in the first heavenly layer to the second heavenly layer and the second heavenly layer to the third heavenly layer. I'll wait a little longer. Maybe I will obtain nine Yin Taoist scripture. Su Qin slowly got up, walked out of the attic, and looked up at the sky. When he was in grade 9, Su Qin used invincible Vajra divine art and lunar body refining technique in tempering his body. Both yin and yang, which even made Su Qin's lifespan soar. Now that Su Qin has entered Arhat realm and before breaking into the fourth heavenly layer, he wants to do the same as when he was in grade 9. However, for the current Su Qin, invincible Vajra divine art and lunar body refining technique have long lost their effect. Probably only the combination of nine yang divine art and nine yin Taoist scripture would affect him. It's a pity that Su Qin didn't obtain nine yin Taoist scripture. No hurry. One step at a time. Although cultivation does not have to follow the path of both yin and yang, Su Qin realized through the eyes of truth that he was most suitable for yin and yang. If he focuses on just one, like what is most suitable for others, he will encounter problems in his later stages of cultivation. By then, there will be no turning back and it is too late to regret it. Oh right. Today's sign in opportunity has been refreshed. Where should I sign in? Su Qin took a step forward and disappeared. When Su Qin appeared again, he was already standing in front of a huge temple. Tang Empire's ancestral temple. Su Qin slowly stepped inside. Huh? Su Qin seemed to perceive something, and his eyes focused on an elder guarding the entrance of the ancestral temple. The elder's hair and beard were all white, he was trembling just from standing there. It looked like he would be blown away by the wind at any moment. 
The huge ancestral temple was only guarded by this elder. I didn't expect the Tang Empire to have so many hidden dragons. Su Qin glanced at the elder and looked thoughtful. This elder might be hiding from everyone in the palace and even the purple-clothed eunuch, who's a peak grade one, didn't know about him. Just that, in the eyes of Su Qin, he directly found out the details of the other party. The elder was a peak grade one great grandmaster. However, not to mention peak grade one, even a grade one great perfection is nothing to Su Qin. Let's sign in at the temple. Su Qin took a step forward and went inside the ancestral temple. The light in the ancestral temple was extremely dim, but you can see that every corner of the place was clean and tidy. Obviously someone would come by every day and clean. System. Sign in. Su Qin muttered silently in his heart. Congratulations. Signed in successfully. Obtained the world suppressing sovereign art. The system rang in Su Qin's ears. World suppressing sovereign art. Su Qin raised his brow. Then everything about world suppressing sovereign art flooded into Su Qin's mind. World suppressing sovereign art is a divine art that once cultivated to the extreme, one can enter the legend realm. It is said that the founding father of the Tang Empire increased his cultivation by using the world suppressing sovereign art, coupled with the help of a country's luck, he stepped into the legend realm in one fell swoop, then crossed the sea to seek for the life aura and increase his longevity. Although it is of no use to me, but the concept can be useful. When you arrive at Su Qin's realm, you are no longer confined to a fixed path. You can merge hundreds of skills and divine arts to be unique in your own way. Not bad. It's a very interesting cultivation technique. Su Qin slightly nodded and positively commented. Tang Empire's founding father. Su Qin turned his gaze to the highest point of the ancestral temple and saw a wooden token belonging to the Tang Empire's founding father. Although the Tang Empire's founding father had crossed the sea, and the people didn't know whether he's alive or dead, the emperors of the previous dynasties will still worship the Tang Empire's founding father here. I'll borrow your place for a while, Su Qin thoughts moved. A piece of sandalwood flew and fell into the incense burner. Wang, the sandalwood burned and smoke rose. Time to go back. Su Qin's figure disappeared. Half an hour later, the elder guarding the ancestral temple slowly walked in the ancestral temple. Founding founder, you will soon be 500 years old. The elder sighed lightly. He picked up a piece of sandalwood and his expression was pious. He was ready to light some incense to worship the founding father. This is what he does every day after all. For the last 60 years, he has never stopped since he guarded the ancestral temple. However, the next moment, he was stunned. Although there was no change in the incense burner in front of him, the elder could smell burnt sandalwood. The smell was very weak and barely noticeable. Even normal people will subconsciously ignore it. But in the elder's eyes, it was like seeing a thunderbolt on a sunny day. The elder's forehead was overflowing with cold sweat, and his bent waist straightened instantly. Someone has been here. The elder raised his head and looked all around, in the depths of his eyes flashed extreme shock. Chapter 99. Southern Ming Empire. Someone has been here? In the ancestral temple of the imperial palace, the elder was shaken. The world only knows that the purple-clothed eunuch, eunuch Zhao, in the imperial palace of the Tang Empire is a peak grade 1. But in fact, besides eunuch Zhao, he is also a peak grade 1. On the surface eunuch Zhao is at the top of everything, while he just hides in the dark. Even the current emperor does not know of this. Not only that, but the temple guard is different from eunuch Zhao. Eunuch Zhao is loyal to Emperor Tang and would give up his life for Emperor Tang. But he, the temple guard, is different. It is not the emperor who he is loyal to, but the Tang Empire itself. As long as the Tang Empire is still standing and the person sitting in the throne is named Li, the temple guard will not come forward. Impossible. In the imperial palace, who can sneak into the ancestral temple without me noticing? The temple guard felt his scalp go numb as he was stared blankly at the incense burner. He had been standing guard outside the ancestral temple, but he had never noticed anyone sneaking in, and yet there's the burnt smell of sandalwood. What does this show? This shows that someone walked into the ancestral temple right in front of him and even put a piece of sandalwood in the burner, but he didn't notice it. How is this possible? He is a peak grade one. With him guarding, even ants crawling in will not escape his perception. 
Not to mention a person burning sandalwood. For such a big movement, the temple guard didn't notice or suspected anything. If it weren't for the faint smell that's still left, he might not even know that someone had sneaked in today. Is it possible that it's a grade one great perfection? The temple guard's thoughts turned quickly, but in the end he shook his head and denied the idea. Although the strength of a grade one great perfection is better than a grade one. But he is a peak grade one that has transformed twice. Even if he is not as good as a grade one great perfection, he will still notice the ladder coming in. A storm might be coming. A hidden dragon has come to the imperial palace. The temple guard muttered in a low voice. Although he didn't know who had sneaked into the ancestral temple, he vaguely realized that the other party should not harbor any malice. After all, from the point of view of the temple guard, if the other party did have bad intentions, the imperial palace would have been destroyed already. East Palace. Su Chin's figure appeared silently. That's right. I forgot that I burned a piece of sandalwood, if that elder returns, will he notice? Su Chin touched his chin, but he soon got bored and lazy to think about it further. So what if the temple guard finds out that someone had entered the ancestral temple? With his trifling peak grade 1 strength, it was basically impossible to follow the trace back to Su Chin. Anyway, with the innate spirit liquid, there is no need to create an essence gathering holy land array anymore. Su Chin thought. The role of the essence gathering holy land array, is to gather world's essence chi to achieve the effect of increasing the speed of cultivation. But now that Su Chin obtained the innate spirit liquid, Su Chin simply doesn't need world's essence chi. All the consumption he would need, can be provided by the innate spirit liquid. The innate spirit liquid, as a treasure formed in nature, is pure and does not require Su Chin to refine it. It can just be absorbed. And strictly speaking in terms of quality, the innate spirit liquid is far beyond the world's essence chi. Of course, Su Chin only looks down upon the essence gathering holy land array that can only encompass an area of several dozen li. If one day, Su Chin can create a large essence gathering holy land array that covers several thousands li, several tens of thousands of li, and even covers the entire continent, that's another story. Quantitative change can also cause qualitative change. If the world's essence chi of several tens of thousands of li is really gathered in one place, its effect would definitely not be worse than the innate spirit liquid, it might even be greater. In the following days, Su Chin mostly just signed in at the imperial palace. Occasionally, he would be called by his younger sister Su Yuyan, to eat the meals carefully prepared by the imperial chef together, and sometimes he would encounter Emperor Tang. Ever since Su Chin's, amazing words, last time, Emperor Tang has obviously a highly favorable impression of Su Chin and he often asks some questions. Su Chin felt a little impatient about this, and he would usually just say a few words casually. He came to the imperial palace to sign in, not to entertain the emperor. Two months passed. In the past two months, Su Chin has signed in in a small part of the palace and has had a plentiful harvest. On this day, Su Chin was walking slowly in the imperial palace avenue. Having the status of a counselor, plus being crown prince Li Sheng's brother-in-law, Su Chin can basically freely go in and out of the Eastern Palace, as long as it's not close to the Imperial Palace, he will not be questioned either. While Su Chin was thinking about where to sign in today, he came across a group of people. Judging from their clothes, these people were obviously not from the Tang Empire. Also a palace eunuch was leading them. In addition to the eunuch, a small group of Imperial Palace troops also followed. Although they seemed to be protecting the group, in fact, they were watching them. Southern Ming Empire. Su Qin glanced and found that the words on the clothes of this group of people confirmed their identity. In this world, nations coexisted with each other. Among them, the Tang Empire is the most prosperous, occupying the vast central plains, while the Southern Ming Empire controls the area south of the Tang Empire and close to the sea. The current Ming Emperor is brilliant and in his prime. Since he has been enthroned, he has eliminated the Qing Empire and gathered power. Now 20 years later, the Southern Ming Empire has become a thorn in the side of the Tang Empire. Apart from this, the Ming Emperor also established the Bright Gown Guard, which is an agency that investigates countries and gathers world intelligence. Even the Meng Yuan Empire, which occupies the endless grassland in the north, also has spies from the Bright Gown Guard. But even though the nations can't wait to tear each other apart, 
they still have to maintain their outside face. And every once in a while, the Tang Empire and the Southern Ming Empire would have diplomatic contacts. The main role of these diplomatic contacts is to maintain the relationship between the two countries, or to convey some information. Su Qin's divine sense swept around. Huh? Su Qin discovered something, and his eyes fell on the Southern Ming envoys, there was a hint of surprise in his eyes. Chapter 100. Yin Qi in the body. Interesting. Su Qin's gaze faintly swept across the back of the Southern Ming envoys. These few people looked very unremarkable, and their heads were also slightly lowered, as if they were afraid of offending someone in the imperial palace. But only Su Qin noticed the trace of killing intent on these people. The killing intent is extremely secretive and was hidden deep in their hearts. Even if it is a peak grade 1 great grandmaster like Eunuch Zhao, they may not notice it. But unfortunately, this group of people met Su Qin. Within Arhat's divine sense, this group of people wanting to hide from Su Qin is tantamount to a dream. Killing intent? And hiding your strength? It seems that these southern Ming envoys came to the imperial palace for a special purpose. Su Qin's eyes looked thoughtful. These people were mixed in the southern Ming envoys. It was impossible for the Ming emperor not to know of this, even if this wasn't the Ming emperor's order. In other words, maybe the Ming emperor was ready to take action against the Tang Empire. Indeed, the Ming emperor had this plan. Currently, Emperor Tang is very old. Although he had established a crown prince, the other princes had much different opinions on the matter. In short, the court was chaotic. If the Ming emperor doesn't take this opportunity to make a move, how could he deserve his title as a hero of this generation? There is no just and honorable fight between countries. The winner is the king and the loser is the bandit. Are these people planning to assassinate Emperor Tang? Su Qin guessed, but he didn't think that the probability of success was too high. After all, Emperor Tang is closely guarded by Eunuch Zhao. And these assassins must continuously hide their killing intent, otherwise Eunuch Zhao will notice. It is basically impossible to pose any threat to Emperor Tang. If Emperor Tang was so easy to assassinate, he would have died long ago. The brilliant Ming Emperor's plan should not be so simple and rough. But then again, what does this have to do with me? Even if there really were assassins making a fuss in the Imperial Palace, as long as it does not affect the Eastern Palace, it has nothing to do with me. No matter how fierce the power struggles in the world get, I just need to sign in. Su Qin didn't think too much anymore. And with the background of the Imperial Palace, how can it not deal with a few assassins? Su Qin returned to the East Palace and found that a maid had been waiting for him outside. Young Master Su, His Royal Highness asked you to go to Chungin Hall. The maid moved towards Su Qin, slightly bowed, and whispered. N. Su Qin glanced at the sky. The Crown Prince Li Sheng probably wanted to invite him to taste the meal carefully prepared by the chefs. Soon. Su Qin came to Chungin Hall. Sure enough. The table has long been filled with delicious food. Third brother, come sit down. Crown Prince Li Sheng moved towards Su Qin and laughed. After they ate, Su Qin glanced at Su Yuyan and casually asked, How come you haven't given birth to any children after so many years? When Su Qin mentioned this topic, Su Yuyan's complexion changed. Crown Prince Li Sheng, who was happily eating, also looked down. Third brother, my health is not good. I have already visited the doctors many times, but still no result. After a long pause, Su Yuyan finally said. In fact, regarding Su Yuyan not giving birth to an heir after so many years, has long aroused dissatisfaction among court officials. Even special officials came forward to impeach her as the wife. The most important thing in the imperial family is the continuity of their bloodline. As the crown prince's wife, if Su Yuyan does not have the ability to give birth to an heir, it will even affect the stability of the crown prince's position. If it hadn't been for Emperor Tang suppressing it, this matter would have become a big deal. Yuner, don't worry, there will be a way. Crown Prince Li Sheng looked at Su Yuyan and comforted. When Su Yuyan heard this, she only helplessly shook her head. How? If there is a way, then why didn't it appear before? In the past few years, she has visited many doctors, including the imperial doctor next to Emperor Tang, who had personally checked Su Yuyan. It was then concluded that there was yin qi deep in her body and they couldn't do anything about it. 
Fortunately, the imperial doctor was loyal to the Emperor Tang and did not spread this secret. If you believe me, I can try and have a look. Su Qin glanced at the expressions of Crown Prince Li Sheng and Su Yuian, and said. Third brother wants to have a try? Su Yuian was puzzled. Although she believes in Su Qin, she isn't that sure, as even the doctors couldn't cure her. Yuner, let third brother try. Crown Prince Li Sheng next to her seemed to think of something. He was shocked at first before he immediately urged. He remembered that some time ago, Su Qin told that Emperor Tang's fate was soon ending. Although he doesn't know whether what Su Qin said was true or false, at least Emperor Tang didn't deny it. Okay. Su Yuyan nodded. Next. Su Qin put his hand on Su Yuyan's pulse. In fact, he had already used divine sense to scan Su Yuyan's body inch by inch. The reason why he still needs to check her pulse is to confirm it, that's all. There is yin qi in your body. Su Qin put down his hand and shook his head. When he said this, Su Yuyan's eyes were lost. Crown Prince Li Sheng also slightly sighed in his heart. He remembered very clearly that the imperial doctor also said the same thing. Then the next sentence would be, I am powerless in this matter. However, what Su Qin said didn't even come close to their expectations. Instead, he just casually said, it's a small problem. After signing in the Shaolin Temple for 30 years, in addition to countless divine arts, Su Qin has also obtained many medical books. In a way, Su Qin is definitely no less than any imperial doctor in the world, in terms of medical skills. And compared to those imperial doctors, Su Qin can actually heal even the most subtle illnesses with divine sense. Hence, it is just a small problem. What? Crown Prince Li Sheng's eyes widened and thought that he had heard it wrong. Third brother, did you just say it's a small problem? Su Yuian was also shocked. Yes, I can cure it. Su Qin paused before continuing. Give me a brush and paper. Bring him a brush and paper. Crown Prince Li Sheng immediately stood up and ordered the eunuch, who was waiting next to him. Yes. The eunuch hurriedly executed the order. Soon, the eunuch brought the paper and brush, placing it respectfully in front of Su Qin. Su Qin then casually wrote a dozen kinds of medicinal materials to form a prescription, and then placed the brush aside. Follow the above medicinal materials to make a soup, then drink one bowl in the morning and one in the evening, continue it for 30 days. Su Qin said. In actuality, the prescription is just a facade. When Su Qin checked Su Yuyun's pulse just now, he used his true essence to get rid of most of the yin qi within her body. It's just that he was worried that Su Yuyun's body might not be able to bear it, that's why Su Qin didn't cure it all at once and instead, opted using this prescription to slowly get rid of the remaining yin qi.